Well, good day, footy fans. You're looking live at the city skyline of Adelaide, the capital of South Australia. Today, it provides a spectacular backdrop to our venue, the Audi Arena in suburban Theberton. As Spacequake Sports proudly brings you one of the biggest games in our state's football calendar. Over a century ago in 1911, five clubs banded together and formed the first season of the South Australian Amateur Football League. 107 years later, with 81 clubs, 282 teams and over 10,500 players, this organisation, now known as the Channel 9 Adelaide Football League, stands as one of the largest sporting competitions in the country. And this afternoon, after a season involving thousands of games, just one remains. And it's the big one, the OTR Division I Grand Final. It's Tea Tree Gully hunting and fighting for their first ever Division I flag against defending champions, the Ross Trevor Old Collegians. Who will prevail as the Premier Division's Premier Team? My name's Phil Hurden. Thank you so much for joining us today, courtesy of Spacequake Sports. My colleague Colin Rouston will be joining me shortly. We have the two teams today. If you know your Adelaide Football League, you know that they're both red and black. Tea Tree Gully won the second semi-final, so they are in the home jumper. The black with the red sash. Ross Trevor, Rocks are in the alternate strip, mainly white with the red and black hoop. I'm joined today by umpiring director for the Adelaide Football League to keep me on the straight and narrow throughout this afternoon. It's a very good afternoon to Colin Rouston. How are you, Colin? Good afternoon, Phil. Yeah, looking forward to this very much. Fantastic, mate. Well, we're not too far away from the national anthem and we will cross to that shortly. Earlier today, this is going to be the third of three grand finals played. The C1's got us underway at Audi Arena Theberton as uh, Tea Tree Gully have their photo taken. And it was the Goody Saints 9761, the Henley Shark 6642. So the Saints getting up by 19 points. And then the OTR Div 1 reserves completed about 15 minutes ago. It got tight late, but Henley held on. The Sharks 9357, eight point winners over Goody Saints 7749. So, Colin, just as we wait for the anthem to be sung with us, what a gorgeous day for a grand final. Oh, magnificent, isn't it? It's one of the best days for footy I can remember. So, yes, we're very lucky. Well, the scene is almost set here. You would have seen on some of the special effects cameras that we've got around the ground, thanks to Spacequake Sports, a bumper crowd here at the Audi Arena this afternoon. The two best teams in the OTR Division One here today. And of course, you can't start a big sporting competition without the national anthem. We'll go down to the ground for that anthem. Rachel Leacard. Coaches and umpires, as we stand for the Australian national anthem to be sung by Rachel Leacard.
And we are set for a big game of the Channel 9 Adelaide Football League. You're with Phil Hurd and Colin Ralston. Uh, Colin, of course, there's three teams out there today, the men in green, your boys, the umpiring crew. Who have you selected to manage this big game today? Yeah, it's always a great honour for the umpires. They all aim for it. And uh, the two that we've chosen in the field this, this year, Chris Rash and Frank Manicus. So Frank did the 2015 Div 1 Grand Final. This is the first Div 1 Grand Final for Chris Rash. And uh, they've both had great years. So uh, hopefully they can continue that on today. Boundary umpires today, Peter McMullen, Tristan Rogers and Rain Scarman. Uh, they're running the boundary. Jason Rigg and Stephen Rip are in the goals. You can see a glorious day for football. If you very difficult to find a cloud, it will be a bit warm for the players. Um, interesting matchup. Probably the two best teams this year. They finished first and second. Uh, Ross Trevor, the minor premiers. But T Tree Gully got them in the second final, second semi by 18 points. Yeah, absolutely. It did. It promised to be an absolute ripper. So just before we move on from the umpires, one of the boundary umpires cut his uh, hand during the week. So Tristan Rogers couldn't take the field. We've had to replace him. James Van Gill's taking his spot. So, so late change there in the umpiring crew. It'll be the gullies in the red and black. The black jerseys, the red sash. Ross Trevor Old Collegians in the mainly white. Tea Tree Gully. There's history showing there was a Tea Tree Gully team as far back as 1862. They've played in a range of competitions. They won the 2012 Div 2 Championship in the last four or five years. They've been right in the mix, but they have never won Division 1 in this competition. For Ross Trevor, they are the defending champions. They had it easy last year, a huge win over Paynham Norwood Union. They're looking to become only the ninth club. And don't forget, there's 82 clubs in this league. Only the ninth club to win at least three Division 1 Premierships. Nicole, we know that you're used to sitting, not sitting on the fence, but being neutral, sorting <laughs> everything out. Uh, your prediction for this afternoon? Oh, I, I, I do honestly think it will be an absolutely fantastic game. I did see Ross Trevor in action last week in the prelim final, and their third quarter was dynamite. So if they can bring that to the table, they're going to be very hard to beat. Yes, it was nine goals to nil in the third quarter. You looked at the rest of the game, the scores in that prelim final, pretty even, but absolute domination, and it was a... A similar thing in the second semi-final, Ross Trevor led by seven points at Lemon Time going into the final quarter, but it was Tea Tree Gully kicking three goals, seven to absolutely nothing by Ross Trevor to get into the grand final by the direct route. Just picking up which way the teams are going, I'm going to suspect that it will be the Gullies going to the right of your TV screen. Ross Trevor, Old Collegians, heading to the left. So that will be heading to the northern end. Uh, Gully's heading to the southern end. Um, an oval that's not quite aligned north-south, I should add. Little bit of push and shove as you would expect, but there's the siren. The ball is in the air, and we are set to rock and roll. The OTR Div 1 Grand Final. Rucks will go to it. Push down from Penny, and it will be a quick stoppage. And Colin, umpires, what are their instructions early stages to make sure they've got control of this contest. Well, really, we hope that they just keep doing what they've done all year, and you'll notice that we don't pay too many holding the balls in this uh, in this competition. We give the, the player first the ball every chance. Alex McKay gets the first kick off the ground, but it's Mark Southerly, Karen Holland at centre half back. He brings it to the grandstand where they're packed, where the crowd is packed, looking out there for teammates, but it spills out of bounds. Looking for number 27, James Butterworth. As we find that when the teams go alternate jumpers, they do change their numbers a little bit. No score is yet. Opening minute of the contest. Here comes the gullies. Kick around the body. It is smothered. That was smothered by James Jordan. The kick attempted by Dylan Schoenmakers. And you can see there with our boundary cameras, a good crowd in. We've got the corporate tents, we've got the barbecue, we've got the beer tent, we've got the canteen. Chock a block this afternoon. As expected, a hard start early. James Jordan gets the hand pass to Pat Dawson. His kick is high. Looking there for Nelligan. Couldn't find it, but here comes the rocks now. It's McCullum onto Jonas inside forward 50. The first one for the men in white this afternoon. Who can pick it up? Looking as Tom Hurley. Umpire's found a free, and it will go the way of. A man they call Hungry Heath Kamain. He'll have the shot from just outside 50. 
So important, Colin, you would think both sides get that first goal on the board, settle the nerves. I remember paying them Norwood Union last year in the grand final, kicked eight behinds to start the contest. By the time they got their first goal, they were pretty much out of it. Terrible conditions last year. We've uh, obviously got totally different setup this year. No excuses today. It's come in from 50 right over the goal umpire's hat. And Rocks strike first. They're one strike six. Tea Tree Gully yet to score. And, um, yeah, confidence start there. Good forward movement, Colin, by the defending premiers. Yeah, that will be just what they wanted. So uh, Tea Tree Gully need to bounce back straight away. So Kamein, who's been one of the main goal scorers for the team through the season, gets the first goal. I'd like to welcome you, whether you're watching on the YouTube feed or Facebook. We're keeping an eye on the YouTube feed, so good day to Building Bricks, who's a TTG fan. So come on the gullies. If you've got a comment, question, if we've stuffed something up or missed something, let us know. We'll keep an eye on it as the game allows. Rocks will get the clearance. Another quick inside 50. Spills to the front of the pack. This is Hurley. Does a nice spin around. Looking in that pocket and finding Kamein. And if the gullies can't stop the man they call hungry, they're in a lot of trouble this afternoon, Colin. Absolutely. And uh, Tom Hurley works at the sample. Not him well. He's uh, started the game well. He's had a big weekend. And an even bigger <laughs> weekend. Grand final live playing today. Grand final in his role at the Sandful tomorrow. Hope Did, he's got Monday off. Didn't get my slate this week, too. He was, uh, he was very busy during the week this no, week. No, there's a few, <laughs> few of us involved with Sandful. But we're, of course, at the Adelaide Footy League. The Channel 9 Adelaide Footy League come in from 40 metres out. Oh, he's got the kicking boots on today. Three and a half gone. Heath Kamein, two straight. Nobody else has scored. This is a glorious start to the defending champs. Just what they wanted, yes. Uh, great ball movement, first to the ball, and getting rewarded for it. Looking at the road to get here, Ross Trevor finished the season minor premiers, 14-4 and four record. Straight to the second semi, they lost to Teachy Gully by 18 points. Rebounded last week, they won the prelim against Paynham Norwood Union by 56. Back in the middle. Umpire balls it up. This one, the tap down, will give that to Rocks. Coming in to lay the tackle straight away, though, is Dylan Schoenmakers. And he'll stop James Butterworth, who's wearing number 27 today. Rumour had it, he wore 29 last week, just to confuse us a little bit. Of course, Ross Chever in the alternate strip today. This is what you like to see, a clash jumper that actually clashes. So we can tell the red and black apart from the red and black. This is Tea Tree Gully. This is Troy Menzel being told pre-game he's a key player. Gully's have it inside 50. Here's the spill down. Kick to the goal. Screen a mark at the top. It was Spittle with the kick. And I reckon that's the man they call Pistol Peter Personos who's marked because you cannot miss that haircut. <laughs> and he's marked top of the square and a chance to get the gullies back in it. Hey, you're a true professional, Phil. You've done your homework. And uh, yeah, this, this is just what Teacher Gully needed. Right in front. Important settler for Teacher Gully. They're probably, well, they have to be the underdogs. Well, it's true they came in the direct route. I think that whole thing about not having won a Div 1 Premiership before, having been in the mix the last couple of years, finding a way to come in short. If you're playing the defending champions, who've been in this environment totally different to any other week. It's the team that's been here and done it that has to start favourites. Well, it's also Ross Trevor had such a great minor round too. They finished on top for a reason. Sure, they lost the first final, but uh, their overall year suggests that they are going to be very hard to beat today. Five minutes gone. Both teams have got a major. Could be set for a big one this afternoon. The tap from Clint Doe, who's an inclusion, did not play last week. Jordan Miller, number 25, I think is the man out. But in the end, we're still in the tea saucer in the middle of Audi Arena. Suburban Thebiton. Home now for about oh, almost a decade, I reckon, of the Adelaide Footy League and the office of one Colin Rouston. As it spills, kick to Alex McKay, the vote getter in the medal, top vote getter for the Gullies. He's a set. The Ross Trevor player there, some work to do, and that's Sam Jonas, who's also changed his jumper number. That's keeping you busy. Yeah, Alex McKay has won the medal in a previous year, so he's, he's certainly one of their best players. From the tap, the gully's trying to move it forward. 
That was Matt Stink getting tackled, trying to go to forward. Here comes the kick, spills to Chad Show and Makers. One on one contest. Personos is leaking, he's forcing the pressure. He's forced the fumble. He's got the hand pass on, and a bouncing ball is touched. Try there by Troy Melville, not to be. And we've got our first behind. Actually, our second behind, apologies. Must have missed the first one. Tea Tree Gully, 117. Ross Trevor, the scoreboard says 2 1 13. I'm not sure if that's correct, Colin, because I don't remember Rocks scoring a behind. I reckon the scoreboard might have given it to the wrong team. Spacequake Sports, though, have it correct. 12 7 in favour of Rocks, but they've brought it back. Tea Tree Gully to Chad Schoenmakers. Any wind here this afternoon? Is it slightly favouring the left to screen? Yeah, the flags are waving that way, but. It doesn't look like there's a, a huge difference. Not much consequence. Hand pass on. This is going to be a big, booming, long kick towards the goal line. Will it tap out of bounds? No, it's his Alex McKay. He's dangerous centering ball. Good idea. Just lost it on execution. James Jordan takes it. He goes back to the Memorial Gates, one of the heritage trademarks of this, well, historic ground. They used to call it the Pug Hole. It used to be home of West Torrens, the Eagles. Now home of community football in South Australia, the Adelaide Football League. Rocks working it back and forth across their goal line. As it was Sam Jonas, gets it back to Tommy Hurley. He was instrumental in one of their opening goals, centres it towards a contest. In the middle, he's Alex McKay, he's lurking. He bounces, shows some brilliance, gets the hand pass off. Dainey kick, it went 15, you reckon? Just. Just. And it will be a gully shot on goal and probably deserve the benefit of the doubt as Daniel McCullum's taken the mark, given that brilliant play by McKay to win the contest and find himself in open space. He's starting to get into it, Tetra Gully, aren't they? So uh, if this, will, uh, this will put them right back in the contest. This would be for the lead. Long high kick. It's going to land right on the line and touched over. So scoreboard has corrected itself here at the ground. Spacequake Sports always had it correct. It is Tea Tree Gully 128 trailing rocks. Ross Trevor, the old collegians, two straight 12. You're with Phil Hurd and Colin Ralston on a beautiful day here in Adelaide. The OTR Div 1 grand final long kick in. That's landed in the square. Can rocks make use of it? Brought to ground. Up I says, I'll take it. So fair to say, kind of a little bit more lean way, certainly than AFL, probably more so than even Sandville level. Yeah, we'll probably tighten it up a bit next year, but for this year's interpretations, we give them quite a bit of proper agenda. From the tap down, Gully through Menzel, kick comes in forward, 50. Gully's are very good at putting it to the front of the pack, just moving it forward, Menzel to Personos. Personos, the snap in the pocket, the snap! Personals, the first multiple goal scorer of the day. And for the first time this afternoon, it's T Tree Gally in the lead, 2 2 14. Ross Trevor, 2 straight 12. Yeah, and uh, they really have got themselves back in the contest. It looked like Ross Trevor were off to a flyer, but as we thought before the game, it's going to be a great contest all day. It, it should go down to the wire. Made my first stuff up. I said Person is the first multiple goal scorer that they've course, Kamein has two for Rocks. Personos has two for Tea Tree Gully. Well, excuse you, Phil. This is your first call for the year for the Adelaide Footy League, so you were told to make a mistake or two. Oh, mate, there'll be, there'll be more than two. I'm just glad there's not a fine jar for each one or else I'd be, I'd be paying someone for the day's work. We're back in the middle, though, and no one's escaping from that. Just, just looking at the old arena, Colin, how good is this service? Oh, it's a magnificent oval. Yeah, it really is. Uh, we're very lucky to be able to play on it. I don't know, some AFLW games here, I think, and that challenge game here once before, and that's meant a fair bit of investment, plus from the Adelaide Footy League, plus from the state government, and it's really becoming a magnificent facility for football in this country, and you wouldn't want a better place to play a grand final. We've got plenty of room in the grandstand, we've got the, the um, wing on the outer side, a few people there, plenty of standing room for people to love to stand with a drink in their hand and watch the footy. No concrete coliseum here. 11 and a half gone. Gullies by two points. It's just their side of centre. McKay again doing some good work. Tight footy though, about 55 out, working hard there. For us, Trevor is Daniel McCullum. He's the third number change I'm making, just as well I never memorised these. 
<laughs> Hard enough for you as it is, isn't it? <laughs> so, good day to, uh, to Tom McVan. Are you hungry? Well, Personos is building bricks. Loves what Personos is doing so far. Hope you're enjoying the, the coverage. Thanks to Spacequake Sports. Pretty tight game. Ross Trevor got the first two goals. It's been all gullies since. Don't think it's actually been inside Ross Trevor's forward 50 for a good 50 minutes or so. Enough, um, five to 10 minutes. Paula, 55 out. Gully's goal, nice tap back of the hand. That was by uh, Penny. Not really to any advantage though. We've got another stalemate and this is where coaches have made the opening adjustments and are starting to, everyone's got an opponent, everyone's a bit more accountable. Plenty of players around the ball. We've got a bit of action over on the wing. Well, it's not wanting to keep an eye on that. They're really getting stuck into Will O'Malley, one of their best players for us, Trevor. They will indeed. The clearance got the kick away. That was Matt Stent, who was deemed to have gone out of bounds. The Spacequake Sports camera right on the money there. And it will be a throw in. You can see the jumping castle. We've got something for everyone today. Jumping castle and face painting for the kids. The corporate tent for the VIPs. Plenty of food options for the uh, crowd here, which is large in number, as you would expect. Two proud clubs that have been pretty successful in recent years, looking for the ultimate success today. And there's no clearance out of that situation. Will O'Malley, number 14. He's a key mover for Rocks today. Ross Trevor, Old Collegians. He won the medal last year. So we've got McKay and O'Malley, two, probably not the Scotsman and the Irishman, but you get the drift, <laughs> who've um, both picked up medals in recent years. Of course, I went to uh, young Sheedy from Athelston. Not, not so young, but... Not uh, so young, but he, yeah. the Athelston boys are, got relegated, but he picked up a lot of votes along the way. Yeah, it was good to see. He was, uh, had an outstanding year. As Gullies now get it forward, but it is Hurley. Getting it back to jo Sam Jonas. Kick out for Rocks, who seemed to have trouble clearing it up half back at the moment. Big tackle laid there by Penny. The Gullies fans wanted the ball. Umpire said, no, it's my ball. We'll throw it back up. When we get the next, we've got a blood rule, which gives me a chance, Colin. So we, you know, most of the people watching are AFL people, Sandful yep. people. Any particular rules different at this level? Well, obviously, the touch on the hold of the ball, we do give the ball player a lot more pro opportunity. We don't have deliberate rushed. We rarely pay it deliberate out of bounds. It has to be super obvious. And the last disposal rule in the Sandful isn't, isn't no, here at all. No, it's not here. That, not that here. AFL no, stuff. But, but we very rarely pay it deliberate out of bounds. It has to be super obvious. Yep, super obvious. Okay, I remember that. 55 out, and this is where the ball has been parked for most of the last three to four minutes. Favouring gullies, but they're not able to get a clear inside 50. Usually at this stage, Colin, I tend to find umpires find a free kick in there somewhere <laughs> just to clear the ball out. Well, they shouldn't be. They should just be paying the obvious and blame. <laughs> but uh, at the moment, I, I would imagine Ross Trevor's trying to shut uh, Teacher Gully's run down, so that's what I've got numbers yeah, the ball. Left it to Dylan Shawmakers, the kick to the top of the square. Who's lurking? In the end, it was Sam Jonas, who's been very busy in defence. He's tackled by the boundary line. Wasn't taken over. And it will be a ball up. 20 metres out from the gully's goal, heading to the southern end. And Pop balls it up. G, uncontested ruck contest by the time Dow realised he couldn't quite get the boot on ball, was tackled, and that's a free kick. And that's where, if he takes it out of the ruck, the pro opportunity is gone and uh, tackle didn't kick a handball or kick so that's why the free kick. Going back to that Bermuda Triangle where the ball's been a fair bit lately. Gee that was an interesting spoil <laughs> over the head of Chad Schoenmakers. He kept his head, got it to McWaters. McWaters kick dropped unfortunately and then it's bobbled around the head of Clable. Nerves are plenty for the gullies as Spittles kick. A bouncing ball coming from the clouds was Menzel to lay the tackle. And it's umpire's ball. Great tackle. Could have easily got him in the back, but rolled him to the side. Just what you want to see. Could have been anything. Could have been ball, could have been tackle in the back, could have been <laughs> a ball up, and that's what we got. Gee, lots of players around the board at the moment. Hard to get a kick, as you would expect. Yeah, you would expect at some stage the game to open up and uh, one of the sides to really attack and, and go, go for goals. 16.30 gone. Is it 20 plus time on here, Colin? It is. 
20 plus time. Wouldn't have been a lot of time. It doesn't mean a lot of boundary throw ins and just the four goals. Yeah, it's only stopped for when it goes through for a goal or when it goes out of bounds. Uh, not stopped for when the throw up in the middle of the ground. So you're right, there won't be a lot of time on. As expected, two best teams, pretty disciplined, pretty strong defensively, although that kick in the air. Good effort by Dylan Schoen, uh, Show and Makers to almost take it. He's still trying down there. He's actually got the kick away. That's no mean feat. Created chaos by the top near the goal square. Rocks have got some numbers if it sits for Hurley, but it just won't sit. It's that up long foot, that oval football. Now it sits for Hurley. He's tackled though. Brought to ground by Asprey. Crowd again wants ball. They're not going to get it. Wasn't obvious. Hand pass comes out. Here's a shot. Here's the kick. It's going to hit the post. That was Matthew Hallandai. And Willow Malley took a long time to get up there. He was really hurt in that last contest. So worth watching him because he is a key for Ross Trevor. Indeed. He must feel a little bit under siege rocks here at the moment. Just a three-point game. It has been in this half of the field for quite some time. And a kick that I surely wasn't, wasn't set up um, as hit number 10. It was Daniel McCullum, normally ranked number two. He gets it to number one and Dylan Fitzgerald. He's tackled by the boundary line as we tick over 18 minutes, another throw in. True centre wing here at Audi Arena. A big crowd in today, enjoying the beautiful weather and a big football game with plenty at stake. The OTR Division One Grand Final. Good to see Tom and Building Blocks being friendly on the YouTube feed at the moment. As rocks are going forward here, this is a beautiful, clean, crisp move. And this is Gilbert, I think, who's gone forward and has the open goal but misses. First behind to Ross Trevor this afternoon. They go to 2 1 13. Tea Tree Gully 2 3 15. They were glad just to have it up there into the, into the oval. It hasn't been up there for a long time. Yeah, it's a win just to get it up there as Gully's now trying to, to bring it back. They'll come down the grandstand side. He's been dehydrated the last couple of days. And the kick, though, into the man on the mark. You can see there what a great crowd we have in this afternoon. 98% of them on the grandstand side will be a throw-in. We'll lob on the 50. Forward 50 for the gullies. Tap down by Butterworth. Who's it going to spill to? Tackle was... Luke Manuel. And it will be another ball up. Another number change. <laughs> Manuel was 32 last week. He's gone to two. My team sheet is an absolute mess. But Daniel McCullum, who was two last week, is 10 today, according at least to the program. You'll have it right by the last quarter. <laughs> I think I'll just take the program and ignore my notes. McCullum from outside 50 has a good long gook. A big long kick. Will it carry? No. Thump on the line by the Gullies, and we've got ourselves a tight footy game. Just about to hit time on, and it is two goals, three apiece. Of course, 2013, Rocks fans will remember Salisbury North at the end of regulation was tied. We came back and did it again next week. And we had a very ugly re rematch that, that <laughs> year. There was all sorts of stuff going on, but... Uh... Yes, we won't go there. Adam Ashada takes the mark for the gullies, brings it towards the direct well through some hands and um, spills out of bounds. Yes. So we still have the rule that there's a grand final replay, Colin? No, 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 we, uh, we, we, after, play, we play extra time. After that, with no, never again. <laughs> <laughs> it's extra time. We are leaving today with a premiere, folks. That's the, that's the story. Yeah, we don't want to play an AFL grand final, though, that's for sure. No, that's true. That's true indeed. As it is, Dylan Showmakers with the kick around the body. Beautifully picked up. This is Scotty Gilbert. Will he kick it into? Kicks it inside 50, just at the feet of Nelligan. Gullies will get the clearance. Some open play. Personals had it in the T source. So lost it. Great recovery. Trick play. Hand pass. Will it bring the Gullies forward? Here comes Asprey. Kick inside 50. And a mark to Melville. Oh, the party trick by Personos, who had the fumble, faked the Ross Trevor defender in, and then went over his head with the backwards hand pass. That was something cheeky. And it could lead to a goal. Good attacking footy, wasn't it? Yep. Got the open space, goes straight down the guts. 21 and a half gone, Melville. 45 metres out. Straight in front. 
for the lead. Right down King William Street. And it's the biggest lead in the game for the Gullies at least. They go to 3 3 21. The Rocks, Ross Trevor, Oak Allegiance, 2 2 14. They're really on song, Tetri Gully. Maybe the, the couple of weeks break didn't mean they were a bit scratchy to start with, but they're well and truly into the rhythm now. So no doubt they've got a lot to play for. Obviously, the, the first Div 1 grand final victory, but they've also had some. Uh, some, some real tragedy in the last 12 months. Uh, Jonathan Birkin passed away very sadly in the last year and they're playing this for him. So, uh, Number six. Yeah. That's who they're playing her for. He was a member, I think, of their 2012 Div 2 Premiership side, 90 senior games. Found They found out at their last training, pre-season training session of 2017 that he passed away age 24 and dedicated 2018 to him. And there will be, well, there's always emotion spent on grand final, but Plenty for that young man if they get up today. And they're certainly showing they're in the fight. And they're going to get the clearance. Working it well through hands. This is Tim. Um, so this is Adam Machado with the kick towards the outer side. Fighting hard for it personal. He is winning a lot of one-on-one -on -one battles. Gets the hand pass away to Clavey, who's tackled and spills out of bounds. Throw in. Breeze just starting to blow up a little bit. Probably a southerly, from what I can make of the weird orientation here. Might favour Gullies a little bit in the second quarter. But it is a fair bit across the ground as well. From the throw, and there's just a lot of players on top of that ball. It ain't coming out. Quarter time imminent. Who would be the happier coach at quarter time, do you I think? I think it's Gully. Kicking against what win there is, and they're really back in the game, hit the front. Um, they've done extremely well. Yeah, one of the scenarios was Ross Trevor, as they did third quarter against Payne of Norwood Union, would just blow the gullies out the water early, as they did against Payne of Norwood Union in the grand final last year. But after scoring the first two goals, Rocks, the gullies have come right back at them, and they have a six point lead. And they've had the ball at their, mostly in their half of the field. And at the moment, both teams are struggling to just get it out of there and we'll have another stoppage. Yeah, a bit of a rugby scrum at the moment. Um, but as we saw before, when Teacher Gale got out in the open and took the, the game on, they, they, you know, they scored quite easily. So the last goal, Personos, he's the man. He's been involved with all three goals, kicking two and having a very good score assist in the third. So keep an eye where he might be lurking. As we have a ball up on forward 50. Almost at the 25 minute mark, a five goal quarter. Tap down to Ross Trevor. This is William Mead. Gets it out to James Jordan and rocks her away. The kick, the fall. We've seen a few of these actually, just the pressure of the occasion. That was Michael Code, the Sturt veteran. He's just trying to send it forward. Good one on one window to the gullies. Kick forward into space. Strong mark. This is taken by Clavey. Centre wing, member side is kicked though, really didn't set, set his teammate a challenge. Picked up by the new number two in Luke Manuel. He gets the hand pass away. Big play on forward 50. Who's there? Front of the pack. This is William Mead and he's got a raffle. He's got three to choose from. They broke it open, Ross Trevor. And it's Paul Fantasia, who was my fifth number change. 16 last week, <laughs> 26 today. Oh, why did I even bother? Anyway, certainly prefer that than them wearing the red and black stripes. Let's put it that way. <laughs> this is a key kick. This to tie it up. No on quarter time. And I reckon he's done it. He's dumped it from 40 metres out. First goal, Fantasia. And we're another blood roll here. So, uh... And it's going to be... A one, sorry, one point lead to Tea Tree Gully. I missed a point in there somewhere. So Gullies maintain the lead. You always got to work out the, the speed of the scoreboard. It's different at every ground, Colin, the live <laughs> scoreboard. Because that's interesting, because we've got, yeah, yeah, the official scoreboard says Gullies 3 3 21, Ross Trevor 3 2 20. Goal umpires will certainly need to uh, double check when they come in the middle. We will keep an eye on that. Oh. I think our, our score yep, is, is right the right one. That was my fault for saying it tied the score up. Sorry, sorry, David, our producer, for <laughs> freaking you out there. Rocks will get the clearance. That was Jack Nelligan. High kick. 
55 metres out. Bounce, critical. Who can pick it up? Well, Jordan can try. James Jordan, he's tackled. Ball spills. Gullies have got it. Man with a helmet on. Got to pick him up oh. in a sec for Tea Tree Gully. Sends Jeez. it for G. There's a collision and there's a Gully's player who's not getting up in a hurry. That's Spittle, I think. Oh, that was a really nasty head clash, but they're both done well to get up. That was a ferocious contest. Can't be too far off quarter time. It's 20 minutes plus time on a six goal first quarter. Been a pretty good, and there she blows. Quarter time in the OTR Division One Grand Final. A little bit happening there. Willow Mallee's uh, right in the thick of things. Um, so, yes, uh, let's hope that the umpires get in there and control the situation because this is where it can turn a little bit nasty at the quarter time breaks. Does the umpire still have the right to give a free if something breaks out here? No, but uh, the Adelaide Footy League have a, a great rule in place called the Mallee rule. And uh, basically, if they want to continue wrestling, which it looks like it might get there, uh, no, they're starting to go their own way. But uh, the clubs get fined, so uh, we we. We don't pay free kicks, but we can find the clubs if they want to carry on. Okay. So fight now, pay later. Yeah, that's right. And usually the players have to pay it. All right. What we might do, uh, just sending a back note to my producer, Dave, we will take a two-minute break just to rest the tonsils briefly, uh, get our thoughts together. We'll come back. You can watch the vision for sure. This is Space Break Sports. The Division 1 OTR Grand Final. You can see the score. The Gullies, 3-3-21. Ross Trevor, 3-2-20.
And welcome back everyone. You're looking live at Audi Arena and a whole bunch of people here this afternoon as we welcome in the flights overhead. 19 degrees here. It feels just a little bit warmer. But this is a, this is what September's all about. Beautiful blue sky and a great game of football to finish off the season. Kids of enjoying the face painting, the jumping castle. Corporates and sponsors enjoying the facilities and a lot of fans and spectators enjoying the game. And you've got Phil Hurdle and Colin Ralston with the headsets on enjoying the game of footy. Any takeouts from that first quarter, Colin? Oh, it's just what we expected, a, a tight contest uh, between two very good sides. And uh, yeah, no, it's been great to watch. Well, we've seen what Rocks have done with a very slight wind advantage to their end, the left of screen. That's where Tea Tree Gully and the Essendon West Adelaide black and red sash are going. Ross Trevor Old Collegians in the white. And we're set to go underway. Second quarter, OTR Div 1 Grand Final. The Gullies by a point. They get the tap. Good work by Troy Menzel to get a long hand pass out. Under pressure, the Gullies trying to move it. There's an inside 50 there and a tackle. And unable to break away from that was Hollande. And a little bit of actually found a free kick in there. Yeah, I was wrong to the ground, so good pick up. Kick inside 50, long lead and a mark. And this is Troy Melville. He took a good, strong, contested mark earlier. Lad's got some speed and good hands, Colin. Yeah, no, very impressive. And we'll see what he can do. All started with Troy Menzel in the middle. Obviously, a former Crows player has been instrumental in the success for teaching Gully this year. He's a key mover, and every key movement usually starts in the middle. Can Melville finish? 45 out, 30 degree angle. This one is wide to the near side of behind. It extends the lead for the Gullies. Melville now 1 1 on the day. Gullies 3 4 22. Rocks 3 2 20. Ross Trevor. Bring it back. Off hands at the 50 metre arc. Trying to break his way through was Karen Hall, and that was ambitious. But from what I've gathered so far, the umpires you said we'll give that leniency, we'll give them that little bit more of an opportunity to do something with it. Yeah, they feel they tend to reward the tackler, we tend to reward the player first of all. Yeah. And in many ways, I don't think that's a bad idea. I do like the fact that if you get the ball, you're given a decent chance to do something with it. Otherwise, everyone just sits off waiting for someone else to get it. Tap from behind. Well done there by Penny. Gets the tap on to uh, Menzel. Open goal beckoned, and he sprayed that way, way, way out of bounds. Yeah, big chance. Got missing there. Gave the goal umpire quite a workout on that one. <laughs> Two-point game. Teetri Gully in front. Down there into the field. Here comes the kick in board. Looking out here for Fantasia. Over the back of the pack, spills by the boundary line. Teetree Gully have got it. Now they've got to work out how to perform the U-turn. They're going back through Stent. Hand. Lots of passes here. They've got a chance of coughing it up here as Huggett is tackled. Hogan is out for a chance to go here. Ball spills free and the Rocks fans aren't happy. But they do get the kick forward. It's inside 50. Teetree Gully play all ducks. Nelligan with the tackle. Teetri Gully get the free. Here comes the kick out now, looking for Penny. He's marked on the logos. Goes back in board. This is Alex McKay. Almost as true a centre as you're ever going to get. Penetrating quick towards the 50 metre arc, but waiting there is Holland, who's been a key defender. Certainly Gullies have had most of the ball in their half of the field. Usually about 50, 60 metres out. High kick, you can see the wind take that one a little bit off hands and spills out of bounds. Throw in. G'day to Tom, Building Blocks and Frank who've been passing comments on the YouTube chat. Hope you're enjoying the coverage. Two point lead to the Gullies. Three and a half gone, second quarter. Well to ground was Menzel, no escaping there. will be another ball up. You've joined us, we'll get a chance, we'll give you 
some scores of what happened earlier today and then at halftime might just go through all the different premiers around the Adelaide Football League this year. But right now it's Gullies with the ball. Troy Menzel's kick is smelling. Picked up well and sent forward by James John who's found the target. Good forward movement. This is Michael Code from outside 50, kicks partially smothered. Hot footy, 25 metres out. It spills. They've got a chance here. This is Jordan James who had the snap. He's missed everything. Both sides an open goal kick out on the full. That is your finals pressure. Yeah, it did well to get follow up from his initial kick. Just couldn't make the most of it at the end. And eventually this one out of bounds on the full. Earlier today, we had Henley and Goodwood Saints playing two back-to-back -back grand finals, and they both won one premiership each. So we have the throw in. Tap to the front. Spills to Dylan Schollemakers. He's caught. There we go. There we go. We've got a hold in the ball. <laughs> this is Jack Nelligan on the OTR logo. Assessing forward options, too far out to score, surely. He's going to go where he probably should. The percentage play, hot spot, top of the square, but it's all gullies. And that's Josh Flynn. He has that Flynn-like hairstyle from the, the long-flowing Robin Hood locks from in like Flynn, back in the old Hollywood days. Probably before most people's time. Yeah, you're showing your age, Phil. <laughs> Jake Haggard. As it marked for the gullies, out of wing, just defensive side, front of the, the Nine News banner where you see it first. And we thank Channel Nine for their wonderful support of the Adelaide Football League in recent years. Long penetrating kick down. It's now Hurley with the pickup. He's got Demat Demetrius who will try and spin around. High kick in hope, 50 metres out from the gullies goal. Menzel went down. Was he taken high? Yes, he was, but it's Alex McKay. He's got the long hair and the headband on today. Not hard to catch an eye when he's uh, the height he is, but uh, yeah. just there. seeing that beautiful smother recovery and grab. And what's more, the, the kick from that smother actually <laughs> found the target as well. So great all-round play. But back with Alex McKay, who's thinking goal here. He's certainly capable. Man on the mark. 40, this will be a kick about 49 out. I'll tell you what, he's given that a huge roost. <laughs> But it's hit the post. And it's a point to the Gullies who are just starting to be a little bit inaccurate with their shots. They go to 3 5 23, the Rocks 3 2 20. William Mead back in board. Tom Hurley at defensive 50. Back in board. Ross Trevor happy to play a little bit of percentage football here as it was through Sam Jonas. He's gone further field to Kieran Holland, a bit further up than he's been seen. Was chased down, managed to escape, kicked towards half forward. Man in front there for Gullies, that was Huggett. He's gonna put some pressure on Zach McKay. Josh Flynn is there to help, but Rock send it forward. Now Flynn is there to help. Good teamwork here from the Gullies. Zach McKay to Alex McKay. I reckon they might just be related. Matty Sten has it. Defensive edge of the centre square. Both teams, if I've got, just looking at this column now, are just starting to slow down the play. I think that's a little bit of tiredness creeping in. But also just they're just... To, yeah, trying to control the ball, just trying they? to get the, the tempo their way. Yep, absolutely. Long kick to the contest. We'll log on the goalies forward, 50. Good front position, strong mark, Sammy Jonas. He goes back. You can see the wonderful scoreboard we have here. Not a wonderful kick in front of that. Hurley, though, comes into mop up, and Rocks fans can breathe just a little bit easier for the moment. His kick looking out there for Tulio Demetrius. He's taken it. Back to Hurley, who always looks solid, calm, collected. James Jordan. We're still in defensive 50. They keep it there. Eventually, they're going to turn it over, you think, but they're bringing it out the grandstand side now. Kick downfield, looking and finding. Back at Cella, his kick though, missed the target. Strong work by William Mead to stay in the contest. He did well oh. on to Nelligan. Colin seen something that made him go, oh, it's as Michael hit. Coates sends it forward. You watch the hits, I'll watch the footy. As it spills back to Coates, picks it up. Not sure about that being a tap or ever. 
Looked like a good old scoop thrown out of bounds. What made you say, oh, Colin? Ah, oh, that was FAD pay just for a late bump. Um, yeah, just, just a little bit late. Just a little late. And thanks to Building Bricky, who does confirm what we thought but weren't game to say that Zach and Alex are brothers. So special comments to Building Bricky. Thank you. Meanwhile, open snap down to Willow Malik. The goals open up and he slotted it. Ross Trevor back in front, 4-2-26. Gully's 3-5-23. Have a look at this stoppage work, Colin. Yeah, no, it was very, very clever. Will O'Malley read it well, and he is a class player. Do we take some points off there because the throw-in fell short? Well, yeah, the right one went a fair way back. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's, uh, the, player so, played it, the player read it but well. But O'Malley, he was the first to react to it. It's a fair throw-in, and um, just the, the, the seas opened. He was good enough to... If the opportunity is there to slot it, that's O'Malley. And I've got to get this right because there's two of them. Trust their brothers as well. 4 2 26, Ross Trevor, 3 5 23, the Gullies. Debbed and flowed. Enjoyable footy game. Hope you're enjoying it wherever you're watching. Thanks to Spacequake Sports Clearance to the Gullies. This is um, Penny who sent it forward. Now it's with Harlan Day. His hand past those being smothered, it heads towards that boundary line where it spills. Uh, it's been a good open footy this, this quarter. It's, uh, it's good to see that both attacking. End of the day, they've got to kick goals to win it. And that's what both teams are trying to do right now. Expected it to be reasonably low scoring. If you make a grand final, you've got to be disciplined, you've got to have your structures in place. Well, such a big oval too. You tend to find the grand finals that are played here are relatively low scoring because of that. Teams tend to get a bit lost out on the wings. Finding themselves a long way from home. Hurley will get the clearance. His teammate on the bit of pressure got the hand pass back. They've worked it well here, the Rocks. Can they get the final kick? No, they can't. That's holding the ball for mine. Yeah. Umpire concurs. <laughs> Just one too many. That was Demetrius who was caught by one of the gully's key movers and Alex McKay. He kicks inside 50, two on one rocks. The thump forward to the 50 meter, I could spills to Hurley. Another defensive clearance. Short kick now. Here's a chance, Ross Trevor, to find a man to send it forward, looking there for Coe. Got a couple to beat. His teammate goes to ground. Here's the hand pass to Demetrius. Inside 50 and they found a mark. And it's the man who started all, Heath Kamein, who's got two. Can he make it three and suddenly give Ross Trevor a decent lead once again? It's been a bit of a, uh, a Cox light target. Uh, Cox was super important last night and uh, he's been great today, although that wasn't so good. So, kick not great. Gullies will get away with it here. Sander Cock with the clearance. Looking out there for Menzel. So what has he done here? He's gone to take on his opponent and he's just run into a world of trouble. Dear, oh dear. Didn't have confidence in his kick. No, that's right. He should have gone and had a shot, but maybe he knew within himself he wasn't going to... Just going to be a bit short into that breeze. Throw in. True centre wing out of side. Time to get the binoculars out and have a look at this one. Spills to the front. Gullies get it. Clearance to the top of the feet, a 50 metre arc person has got a hand on it, couldn't bring it in. And in the end it will be a stoppage, stacks on the mill. One thing we haven't mentioned so far is that Ross Trevor had played all the home games here this year because they're having renovations to their home ground, so whether that's an advantage or not, I'm not sure, but Ross Trevor certainly seen plenty of Audi Arena this year. They're home, a long way away from home, Ross Trevor this year. They did play three games during the season and... Uh, it's got better for, for the Gullies each time they have played. It was a 71-point win at Tea Tree Gully early in the season. As Gullies now trying to get it forward. McKay, standing start, high kick. It's gone the distance. Can they get a mark out of it? Person was lurking in the end, though. Beautiful work. That skill, Harlan Dider Clayby, who had the goal at his beck and call and has managed to miss. Yeah, costly. Honestly. Good yeah, good Who's pressure got... from the Ross Trevor defender, but yeah, should have kicked that one. And just mentioned the inaccuracy starting, just starting to be an issue. Three goals, six in the air from there. Although there was a Rocks player 
just running interference like a man on the mark who just forced it wide there. Kick out. Comes to the front. Chance for redemption. Here's Clavey's kick. He has the shot. Seven point play. Yeah. All forgotten. Get it to Liverway, maybe. Clavey's <laughs> kick puts the gullies back in front. They go to 4 6 30. Ross Trevor 4 2 26. Great game, and I reckon that's about the fourth lead change we've had so far in this contest, Colin. Yeah, no, it's, uh, well, as we predicted. I think everyone wants to see a close game. Umpiring manager doesn't wants to see a one-sided game, so there's no controversies. But uh, I don't think I'm going to get that today. Well, hopefully <laughs> no controversies, but we, it looks like we're going to get a close game. Fair enough. Yes, we've had plenty of controversies in South Australian football to last us for a little while. Do you want to talk about that a bit, Phil? Uh, no, I think we'll stop. I think we'll stick to who's paying our bills today. The Adelaide Footy League. Sponsored by Channel 9 with Tea Tree Gully and Matthew Stead. A good clearance thumped away by Rocks and Desperation. Only as far as the gullies kick towards the top of the square and out of bounds will be a throw in. Yeah, well, let's just hope that uh, the interchange stewards are doing their job today. And I'm we sure don't, we don't have any, anything here. Every interchange steward in every game around the country will have extra awareness and focus this week as well opponents' teams with their counting. As Ross Trevor with the kick away, it's marked though by the gullies. This is Zach McKay. Doesn't quite have the hairstyle of Alex, but he's growing something there. His kick inside 50, went for 15, and it's been marked by number 14, Jordan Miller. Now, I mentioned before was an out. Well, he's obviously an in. He's just changed his jumper. Gussie Mark, really Gussie Mark. Yeah. No, fi no fear. So this four-point game. Ross Trevor scored the first two goals. Gully's four of the last six. Got a little bit of breeze to work with if he sends it out to curve back in, which it does, but mm, was touched. Not quite enough on front of needed the extra week fix for Briggy. Another behind, it's 4-7, TTG, Rocks 4-2, 26, five-point game. As we see on the replay, he very gutsy mark. Yeah. <laughs> he could have been a rocks, between a rock and a rock. <laughs> rock and a half place. <laughs> and it's going to be a stoppage. Uh, we talked about the tragedy of Jonathan Birkin before, but mm. Tetra Gully also have had some drama this year. We're lucky not to have another tragedy with uh, Tyler Bennett, under 18, yeah. late, that had the cardiac arrest on the field. So just a shout out to a um, Alex McKay, who, who really helped save his life. Yeah. And, you know, it's been tragedies have been a part of the season right here. Thebby Oval, Maggie Varco for Angleville passing away and um, puts a pall on things, no doubt about it. Absolutely. But they are remembered. As yeah. we have a throw, and you can see there from the pick, plenty of people. Look at the, look at the kids, just there on the fence, yelling their encouragement. Good crowd, isn't it? I mean, it's an that. awesome crowd. We've got the AFL prelim final on this afternoon. It hasn't stopped people coming here today. Uh, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> As Matty Stett lays a tackle in the middle. And a shootout, I mean, it's red and black everywhere because both clubs are red and black. Of course, Teach Gully is a suburban club with a huge junior base in Sanford Juniors. Rocks, of course, the old Collegians team. But both plenty of supporters and um, here today to support. Gully's going forward. Here's the kick in board. That was by Jordan Miller. Here's Personos working some more magic but couldn't finish the act. Another behind. And just looking at that scoreboard, Colin, Gullies, they're having most of it. They oh, should be further in front. 4-9-33, Rocks 4-2-26. Yep. Inside 50 count, we don't have it. But you'd have to say it'd have to be at least double. That'd be dominating, no doubt. Absolutely. 12, 12 scoring shots to six. Yeah. And, of course, we'll only take one break in play, one quick forward movement, one goal, and it's all this attack's been for naught. And Ross Trevor, if they continue their third quarter effort from yes. last week's third quarter, they're going to be dangerous after half time. Yes, well, coach Adrian Rocco will be bottling that half time address from last week. Nine goals to nil in a prelim final. So just slow down a little bit here, ball up. 
65 out from the gully's goal. If you had to put where the ball's been most of the day, that's been it, and no one can break clear. Time on not far enough, then a half time. We'll get a bit of a, a breather. As they try and push it. Oh, Alex McKay, beautiful work, went to the boundary. Quick hands, gullies, working beautifully as a team. Is there a target? No, there's not, because in the way, doing very well was Daniel McCullum. Ross Travers' defence has been excellent. They've been under siege. They've had to be. They've had to be. As the kick from Rocks looking and not finding Michael Coates spills out of bounds. One of the beauties of this ground is we're on the flight path. So every so often you get a big jet that passes over. We'd like to welcome Qatar Airlines to the contest this afternoon. Do worry that it's going into the, the light pole sometimes. It's, uh, Indeed. From the clearance, here comes the gullies with Menzel. The kick looking for Personos. He recovers well. What a tackle, though, by Sammy Jonas. Crown rises and they get their wish. No, they don't. No, they don't. Oh, they don't. Yeah, landed in his back. Pushing the back. Oh. Push in the back. This I want to see again. So the umpire's called it and he's landed in his back. And so if it's an illegal tackle, that comes on the top of uh, So I somewhere the ball he's position. spun around. All right, we'll, we'll stay with the kick. It was the last <laughs> the last action of the tackle that uh, caused the umpire to pay that. So co-commentator Colin Rouston's given it the all clear. Peter Personos comes in from 50. This is going to test him and it's going to send it wise. Untouched out of bounds on the full. And so here we go. Okay, so right. So he tackled him front on. Person no, it's, a, it's that second one. It's the second, second one. Tackle, gotcha. The okay, yep, fair so enough. So he can land in his back like that. That's good for a kick. Yep, okay, fair enough. Because I just saw the front on tackle and yep. thought, what a tackle. Yep. But no it wasn't, that wasn't the tackle that was the problem. That's right. First one was fine. All right, all agreed. William O'Malley has it for rocks. Kicks it into the, the centre square. Here's a chance for Ross Trevor to actually get a forward movement. This is through James Jordan looking and finding the hungry man. Heath Kamein, was he off? Not so sure. Santa Cox just checking he's got all his teeth left because I think he copped a knee or a boot in the, in the face. His kick though. Gee, Kamein's not that confident having a shot at goal. It's, it's ripped asunder. Ends up with Stent. Quick as it comes back inside 50 and this could be a two goal play. Troy Menzel on 50. Because he was outnumbered there and it was, a, it was a great grab. So just interesting, Heath Kamani, two goals early on and I'm seeing a forward with the ball not keen to take a shot. This is not usual. <laughs> Almost as unusual as a Kevin Bartlett handball. Uh, I think Troy looks like he's going to back himself here. Yeah, oh, Troy Menzel will back himself. Too far out to score, you would think. I'll tell you what, he's given a good roost, but as you do sacrifice accuracy for distance, and now it's 4-9 as we look here at the plate. Good penetrating kick by Stent, and a strong Mark Menzel opposed to Sammy Jonas. So it's with Ross Trevor. They look down for it. I reckon that was Holland who's taken this, starting to work out who these players are without numbers. Rocks with some good numbers here. Look at the handiwork on that occasion. Do they have a finisher? Oh, no, they don't. They have a dire defender. It's a grand final. And Josh Flynn did not care what was coming. Absolutely. Yeah, very courageous. Anything could have happened there. And then he's taken a great mark. That'll look spectacular on his highlights tape. That's what coach Justin Machado wants to see from his players. No fear. Total commitment. Zach McKay clears for the gullies. Center wing, good, quick pickup. Looking in the Menzel direction. Menzel versus Holland. Holland versus Menzel. Boundary line, the friend of Holland. Let's have a look. Let's see if we see this mark coming. Here comes the kick. Yeah, great stuff. <laughs> he was expecting probably to get collected by someone. In the end, it was his teammate. So seven points to margin. Gully should be further in front. Half time imminent. Late second quarter. OTR Div 1 grand final. In the end, the, the tap down comes to Stent. He's got a strong kick, Stent, but it's another behind. Jeez. And that's bad footy, isn't it? They really just are. Just keep things we see. 
Dave Muggleton, our Spacequake Sports producer, likes that courage and he's giving us <laughs> another replay. Oh, that was a ripper. It was worth watching again. Absolutely. Dave Muggleton, the king of sporting grand finals. Spacequake Sports, if it's a sport, they cover it here in Adelaide. Here come gullies. Here come the hand pass away. Have they finally broken the goal? I reckon that was Melville. I'll stand corrected if I'm wrong. But I reckon it was Melville 20, and that's where I'm sticking with until I'm proven wrong. Uh, Let's have a look. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, 20, Melville. Gee, they needed that, didn't they? Yeah, just, they just, did. Just to reward them for all their work. They've gone forward so many times, and to, you know, to, to be have so many more scoring shots. They would have been pretty down themselves if they hadn't had got that one. So here we go, five goals to four, ten behinds to two. It equates to a 14 point lead and this is the biggest of the game. Gullies would maybe just like to hang on here and take the momentum into the halftime break. Trying to escape Alex McKay, he's just ridden into the Audi turf. Of course Audi, one of the great sponsors of the Adelaide Football League, the Channel 9 Adelaide Football League, that also like to thank their other sponsors as we wait for a free kick to be found. It's being found. We'll go the way of McKay. He wastes no time. Stent's been important. He's the man that you want to get the long kick inside 50 looking for Menzel thumped out of bounds. A chance to thank the other major sponsors for the Adelaide Footy League. They include Sharon, Focus on Furniture, West End, Audi and Bank SA and of course Channel 9 News where you will see it first. Yeah, they've been great supporters this year. Yeah, this level of footy cannot exist without great support, and they provide it. Gullies just surging it forward rugby style at the moment, and it will be a stoppage, 20 metres out. Another goal here would really cement the advantage, and it would be well-deserved. They've had most of the play, most of the scoring shots, maybe not the most scoreboard pressure. But, gee, Hurley, he's been busy. He gets it on to fit um, to McCullum onto Fantasia and it would be another stoppage 26 gone we've had only three goals kicked in this quarter, Gullies have had it two goals, seven, Ross Trevor just the one goal, they've got a chance here as they clear through centre wing looking, goes to the back of the pack, who's got the speed going down at ground level and getting collected in the process was I think Jordan James. That win seems to be picking up a bit too. So third quarter, Ross Trevor will have it. Premiership quarter. This uh, next quarter will be the one that uh, really decides it. Jake Haggard was the ha Haggard was the one who picked up the free. And now it's a further free downfield. Gully's working towards that 50 metre. Actually, there's a lot of red. Where's the black? Here it comes right now. Good pick up, spin, kick around by Asprey. Bouncing ball inside 50. Tap down. That was Sermon on to McCullum. He's tackled and no free. That would be paid at an AFL or sample level, but yeah, as, as we talked about before. But you're watching the Channel 9 Adelaide Football League. There it is, half time. Entertaining contest in great conditions and an excellent, passionate, vocal crowd. It is Tea Tree Gully. They, Tea Tree Gully, the District Football Club, 5 10 40. Ross Trevor, Ock Allegiance, 4 2 26. 14 points the margin. Just while I amass the goal scorers, Colin, your thoughts on that first half? Oh, there's no doubt it's Tea Tree Gully's first half. They dominated. Their top players are playing well, and that's what you need. They're getting the ball down into their forward line. Their only fault was they didn't convert enough, and obviously the scoring shots show that 15 to 6, they should be further in front uh, this next quarter. Uh, Ross Trevor will have the win if they, uh, if they can repeat last week's third quarter effort. It'll be game on, but uh, after half time will be, uh, they'll have to get onto it straight away because uh, they are, at the moment, 14 points behind and not looking anywhere near like uh, challenging Teacher Gully. Special comments today, umpire director Colin Rouston. We thank Colin for joining us today and give me a chance to take a breath every so often. The goal scorers at half time. 
for the Tea Tree Gully District Football Club getting a rapturous applause from the Wolf Pack. Two goals to Peter Personos, Trent Melville and Daniel Kalebi for the old collegians of Ross Trevor. Two to Heath Kamein, singles to William O'Malley, Paul Fantasia. Interestingly, a few boos for Ross Trevor coming up. I was expecting, I heard boos, I looked up, I expected it to be the umpires and it was Ross Trevor. <laughs> The umpires got off very quickly there. I don't think anyone noticed. <laughs> they but, they uh, have a different exit which no one knows about. That's right, exactly. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it just shows the teacher gully supporters have come out uh, in force today, which is great to see. All righty, it's half time. Players need a break. We need a break. We'll be back with an exciting second half. Thanks to Space Break Sports, this is half time of the ODR Division 1 Grand Final. It's Teacher Gully 5 10 40. Ross Trevor 4 2 26. Australia's most satisfied customers again. Even though you need a coin for your trolley, that's good different. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for making such a difference. Every time you shop or refuel with the OTR app, we'll make a donation on your behalf to a community group of your choice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Download the OTR app today and join us as we give back. At Focus on Furniture, yep. get the look with these sweet savings. The Olivia Two Seat Sofa, only $4.99. Or get the whole room for under $14 per week with five years interest free. Get it now with five years interest free for a limited time only at Focus on Furniture. King on the run, uh, you have to get the ball and then get into the basics of the hand on the ball properly, set your feet towards the target, work out how fast they're running, work out where, how far you can drop it in front of them and then everything goes back to watching the ball. Believing in your kick, kicking through and when you finish, run towards the target. Let Ferrari Formal Wear and Bridal make your wedding unforgettable. Visit ferrariformal.com.au for your chance to win a $5,000 designer wedding package. Nine News and the Adelaide Footy League teamed up to raise more than $55,000 for local clubs in Adelaide. And we'll do it again for season 2018.
Welcome back folks, it's half time as you can see, a glorious day here in Adelaide, big crowd, kids all over the ground having a kick, enjoying the finale of the Adelaide Footy League, the Channel 9 Adelaide Footy League. Of course we mentioned 282 teams, 10,500 players and plenty of premiers decided, thought we might take a couple of minutes just to run through them, give due recognition in the C grade, C7. Eastern Park in the grand final beat Goody Saints by 28 points. In the Schweppes C6, Prince Alfred beat Rosewater by 83 points. In the Schweppes C5, Hope Valley beat Pulteney by 38. C4, Salisbury 7, 6, 48 beat Jeffs Cross 5, 4, 34. That's by 14 points. C3, Flinders Park beat Scotch by 38 points. And in C2, Old Ignatians beat St. Peter's by 21 points as Teacher Gully take the field. Today, earlier in the C1s, it was Goodwood Saints, 9-7-61, being the Henley Sharks, 6, 6 42 So we thank Schweppes for their support of the C-grade competition. Going through the main divisions, uh, Division 7 reserves. Horton Districts beat OSB Lonsdale by 66 points. And a really big day in Division 7, the Marion Rams played O'Sullivan's Beats Lonsdale, two teams that were the whipping boys in the Southern Football League came over, they ended up in the Div 7 Grand Final and the Rams of Marion, one of a former work colleague of mine, Ben Porter, coach of Marion, suffered a stroke in the week leading into the game, gave up the coaching duties, came down for the final few minutes. Great to see Ben and the Rams get up there. G'day Ben if you're watching, I hope you're keeping well. Uh, the Rams beating Lonsdale by 21 points. In Division 6, the Balfour's Division 6 reserves, Adelaide Lutheran beat Parry Hills by 7 points. And it was a well, controversial Division 6 this year, but Trinity Old Scholars uh, coming good at the end, got their first ever flag, 13-4-82, beating Rosewater 9-7-61 by 21 points. We go to the 9 News Division 5, it was Christian Brothers Old Collegians beating Hope Valley by 22 in the reserves in the league. Also a CBC double beating Woodville South by 70 points. We go to Division 4 in the reserves. Mitchum Hawks beat the Rams of Jeff's Cross by 6 points. 
That's been the closest grand final so far. And it was Glenunga beating Jeps Cross in the Division 4 Seniors by 24 points. Division 3 Bank SA, Flinders Park. They beat Plimpton by 47 points in the reserves in the leagues. This was uh, Scotch Old Collegians 12-10-82 beat St. Ramblers 7-8-50 by 32 points. And finally, Division 2, the focus on Furniture Division 2. This was last week in the reserve. Sacred Heart Old Collegians 10-10-70 beat Unley Mercedes 3-7-25 by 45 points. And then in the league game last week, completing an undefeated season. St. Peter's Old Collegians are back in Div 1, 11-13-79, beating the Brighton Brommers 3-7-25, 43 points to victory. As mentioned earlier today, Goody Saints by 19 points in the C1s over Henley South. And in the reserves, the D1 to reserves, Henley reversed it, 9-3-57, 8 points over Goody Saints, who came home with a flyer, needed about another 10 minutes, 7-7-49. Colin, I believe you've been checking at the other AFL. Yeah, we've got, we've got the close one. Yeah, we've won. <laughs> West Coast Eagles, 57 to Melbourne, four points. So, yes, uh, we have got the close one. An interesting story behind the uh, C grade today. Henley undefeated all year, Ooh. got knocked off. Well, it happens. Yeah. It happens. You starts Richmond. I mean, they weren't undefeated, yeah. but they were, you know, probably as heavily favoured yesterday as an undefeated team would be. Um, and it, look, it's a game of football, it's four quarters, it's a blade of grass, and you start off 0-0. Zero, zero. Yeah, well, at least for the Henley Sharks, they uh, got one back in the B grade, so not, not a totally uh, wasted day for them. But they'll be happy with their B grade premiership. Both teams are out on the paddock. We'd like to thank Spacequake Sports and Dave Muddleton for giving us all the coverage this afternoon, producing all these wonderful pictures. You can see the camera crew that are spread around the oval doing a wonderful job. Colin, whilst they're warming up, your overview of, of the season. Any particular highlights that stand out for you? Oh, no doubt our numbers. We, we've we've gone from 530. You're talking about umpiring, or are you talking oh, about overall? The, the, the field is yours. <laughs> how, I focus on umpiring all the time. <laughs> yeah. So when you ask me, it's automatically what I think of. I look uh, as far as umpiring goes. We've we've increased our numbers by 100. So we've been able to give uh, field umpires for all A and B grade games, which has been great. As far as the league goes, it, look, it has been an eventful year, no doubt, with lots of things happening. Uh, it's a very strong league. It keeps growing. Um, obviously, you know the, the league has been really tough on on uh, those instances we don't like to see. Um, and you know, I think the wider general community um, certainly respects Adelaide Footy League for that. Um, Salisbury North going to come back in next year after having having uh, their issues early on in the year. And Salisbury West had uh, problems in the finals. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, we're looking for games to be played in the right manner, like today's grand final is, and the other B and C grade grand finals have been played tremendously well, so, you know, the, the leagues make huge inroads into yeah. into that. I mean, you expect it to be physical, you expect to push, you expect to shove, it's a premiership at stake, but you're right, being played in, in the right spirit. Strengthening communities through footy, that is the Channel 9 Adelaide Footy League. The Div 1 this year, Ross Trevor finished at 14 and 4, Tea Tree Gully second, 12, 5 and 1. Goody Saints third, Paynham Norwood Union and Port District fifth. E elimination final, Paynham Norwood Union beat Port District by six points. Qualifying final, the Gullies beat Goodwood by nine. Then Paynham Norwood Union beat Goodwood in the first semi. And we know the rest, Gullies beat Ross Trevor to get here. Ross Trevor beat Paynham Norwood Union in the premium to get here. And we are in the third quarter of the granny. Gullies with a 14 point lead and they get the clearance with a little bit of great aerial work from that. But it will be a Ross Trevor mark and relief. This is through Sam Jonas. Work number six for Rocks in the alternate strip today. And worked under the ball was Tigerman in the helmet. Umpo says that's okay. Fantasia with the mark. Kick inside 50. Gully's got the first two goals going that way. It's just feeling that the sun's come out a little bit. Colin, I know we're under some shade here. Maybe that's it. But... There's a little bit of warmth here. Oh, no doubt. The players will be feeling it. The umpires will be feeling it. Oh, the spectators are enjoying it. But, yeah, it's hard work for those guys on the field. So, right now, it's with the gullies who are trying to work it forward. Spills out of bounds on the centre wing. And that sun's certainly making it tough on your monitor, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's something with the... Uh, that's it. Yeah, maybe that's... Well, thank you, Colin. That's excellent. So... We've got the monitor so we can see what's happening through the camera work, see what's happening live on the field. 
At the moment, we're just waiting for some clear position. We've gone from the stoppage on the boundary to the stoppage in the field. You see what adjustments both coaches, Justin Machado for the galleys and Adrian Rocco for rocks, what they've done to adjust and see what they've got to improve on. Because basically the next time these teams head into the change rooms, one of them will be premiers and one will be runners up. This is the make or break quarter for Ross Trevor, no doubt. They've got the win, they're 14 points down. They've really got to make it happen. Free kick to the galleys to Alex McKay who got advantage, got the hand pass on. That was to Spittle, he was tackled, ball spills free. Here comes Rocks with the footy, coming down centre wing on the grandstand side. Picked up here by Bacanella, goes inboard. Well done there by Hugger to run interference. Comes through some hands, back to Hugger. He kicks into open space. Now it's a race for pace. The bounce is going to favour Fitzsimmons. He'll get to it just before the boundary line. Has a bit of time to pick it up. Come back in board, looking downfield again, kicking into space. Charging hard at the ball is Mick Waters for the gullies. He sends it back, and that boundary line just beating Hubbard out, Hubbard out of bounds. Throw in, 14-point margin, no change to our halftime score. First two and a half minutes of a critical third quarter. We always call it, as you said, Colin, Premiership quarter. You've called it. You say if Ross Trevor are not in front at three-quarter time, they can't win. Oh, I haven't quite said that, but they need to make inroads, no doubt, and uh, here they go. You think that they... Well, yeah, I understand what you're saying. They, they need to be in front to have their best chance, make use of the, the slight wind advantage while they've got it. They've got it inside their forward 50. They're laying big tackles. On that occasion, it was Paul Fantasia stopping the departure of Joshua Flynn. Flynn now with a, that little strapping on his calf. Big thumb from Rocks only as far as Flynn. This time he got the hand pass out onto space. This is Menzel. Trouble was that way. Has some points to come back through Hubbard. They've got some numbers but they've also got the fit of the Vermeers. And eventually a hand pass. You say they only pay the obvious ones, Colin. And that wasn't obvious. Any doubt you don't pay it but uh, <laughs> I actually wouldn't have minded if that was paid. That looked pretty obvious. <laughs> It's a tough decision to make. Who'd yeah. want to be an umpire, eh? There wasn't, wasn't many other things he wanted to do there other than get out of bounds, was there? So the tap comes to the gullies. See, there was a gullies player flat and Kermain with the kick needs a good bounce, didn't get it. Charmaker saying, where's my free? But it's a point to Ross Trevor to open the scoring in this third quarter. They got a 4-3-27. Just their seventh scoring shot. The gullies have had 15. But the margin is just 13 points. Rocks are right in it as there's... Oh, my goodness. This is that, a really interesting one. So that's the, a foul ball into the crowd. Well, the, the ball didn't come back into play, so it will be a throw in from where the kick was taken. A so, throw in? Yep. So that's the rule. It doesn't happen very often, but the ball never came back into play, so it will be... It'll be... Oh, hang on. Might have been overruled by the field up by there. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, Maybe. interesting. Yeah. I actually think the boundary umpire got that one right. But uh, field umpire didn't. Well, we had the angle. Yeah, then it came back in the play, Space Spoke Sports always has the angle, but the field umpire maybe didn't. Maybe he thought it did come into the field yeah. of play from where they were. As we get back underway here, it's a hot footy. Rocks are having their time with the ball in their forward 50, trying to put something on the scoreboard here as Fitzsimmons is tackled. 40 metres out. Lots of players, two, four, six. So there's about 28 players inside this forward 50 arc at the moment. Alex McKay, interesting play there by Menzel just to, to tap it on and it's worked. They've got it to Bilby. He's kicked it down. Phil should open up now. This looks like... Well, I know it's Jonas on the mark. The right spittle? Might be spittle. I'll give that to you and he's... Uh, Spread it a little bit. Chance gone begging for the gullies. Now it's a chance to open up for Rocks. William Mead wants to bring it down the grandstand side. Kicks towards defensive edge of the centre square. Has the player. That was Luke Manuel. Comes off hands. Now gullies have some numbers. Some good one-two hand pass back to Stent. Stent, the big man's got to go low. That's a problem. But picked up well now on this occasion by Halanda. He goes inside 50. Big jump. Can't take the mark was the gullies. Lots of white around the ball. It ends up going from me to James Jordan. Ross Trevor will clear momentarily. But waiting for it is Fantasia. Here come the gullies now with a kick inside 50 and they've got the mark. 
This is Spittle. He sends a long lead. In fact, to be honest, that didn't improve the distance to goal whatsoever. Melville was the intended target, but he kicked it from 50, and by the time it got to Melville, he was on 50. So not much gained from that play. They've got it down there into the ground. They'd be happy about that. Ross Trevor really need to start attacking. They're probably at close to the 14 points is the biggest lead of the game for both teams. Ross got, Ross got it out to 12 early stages with the first two goals, and they'll have the ball here. Just sense the players are just that little bit tired now. Yeah, it's and they've idea. got a full art of other footy to go. Of course, warmer conditions, 19, 20 degrees. Sort of a cooling breeze if you can get there, I think. Will O'Malley has it. Looks downfield, decides to go across goal. Hoping and praying this is going to get a good bounce. It's going to need. It's going to be by the boundary. Just keeping it in. And I can't say that's deliberate because he actually did pretty well to keep it in that far downfield. Will be a throw in any. Only really had to take one step left. Sort of lose his stepping and step out would have been a throw yeah. in anyway. Had to, be, had to be a last possession rule in the sample for that to be part of Fricky. Yeah, and that don't exist here as going down hard at ground level was James Jordan. What can Rocks do? Oh, Gazzy leg. It looked leg. Jack Nelligan. Yes, sir. -y. He's got a number 24 for Ross Trevor. Looks up. What's he got? Kicks it down the line. Tiggerman at the back with the thump. Spills though. This is to Bacanello. Kick inside 50. Right on that arc. Gullies with some numbers. Comes to Haggard. He gets the hand pass off. This puts. Uh, it will spill out of bounds. It puts Zach McKay under pressure. Ball spills out of bounds. So we've gone eight minutes, Colin. Breeze strengthening, as you mentioned earlier. No goals as yet. Yeah, and this is good for the gullies. Teacher Gully will be wrapped the way it's going at the moment. Ross Trevor need to attack. They won't care if not another goal is scored for the rest of the contest. They have the 13-point lead. Kick inside, though. We've got a mark if it stands. It does. A little bit of afters there, but it's no extra. Paul Fantasia has it. And this, Colin, is a big kick. Absolutely. Not easy. The wind will swirl around, and uh, you'll have to get it right. But, uh, geez, it's an important kick, isn't it? Five of the nine goals have been kicked this end. It is the scoring end just. A lot of the behinds and another... Oh, that was barely a behind. We'll give the goal up by the benefit of the doubt when it crossed over the behind post. And a good chance goes begging for Ross Trevor. The defending champs. Only nine other clubs in the history of... The Amateur Footy League, Adelaide Footy League have won three Division One flags. Rocks could do it today. For the Gullies, it's all about their first Division One title. All about number six as well. As they have it with number five, that's Menzel. Menzel's kick looking and finding Stent. He can take a bounce. He's got a booming kick. I'll give him half a chance if he has a shot, but he does the team thing. Kicks it to a lot of white. Bouncing ball sitting there for Sermon. He's brought to ground, ball up 20 metres out from the Gully's goal. Yeah, good defence by Ross Trevor. They got the numbers back there. Weren't many options for Teacher Gully. I've seen Stent from what I've seen today kick. He has got a kick with distance on it. Thought he might have just taken it a bit further and maybe had the shot. But can't blame a player when they do the team thing. Zach McKay trying to get there for the Gully's. Was he taken off the ball? I says yes, he was. Tom Hurley was about to take off, but this is going to be, when we talk about critical shots, here's one. Yeah, he was virtually pushed to the ground in the end. This is a big one for Tea Tree Gully, who have had most of the play, a lot of the flying shots. This is a big set shot, and he's going, and he's facing the goals. He's not going to Stevie J. Distance won't be a problem. Now he goes to Stevie J. Kicks it around the body, and he's dumped it. A big first goal to open the third quarter. We've got ourselves the biggest lead of the grand final. Tea Tree Gully Districts, 6-10-46, Ross Trevor, 4-4-28. And the Wolfman's happy. 
Definitely a key goal, really. That we talked about the importance for Ross Trevor to, to come back into the contest with the win this quarter. Uh, we haven't seen what they did last week in the third quarter today so far. Teacher Gully are right on the money, and uh, they're certainly in the box seat to take this premiership. They've doubled the scoring shots and have now just started to get a cushion. It's 18 points. If I can tell you in the reserves grand final, 18 points ain't much in the final quarter because Goody Saints almost got it back against Henley. Gullies will get the clearance. It's with Menzel. That spells danger for Rocks. Menzel, the pinpoint pass. Melville's marked. He says, let's calm it down, folks. And he's going to take the shot. Yeah, that was classy, wasn't it? That was true yeah. class. Players come and put their hands around Asprey. He did some great work in the lead up. Menzel, though, gets the ball. He found where the space was, and he could not have kicked that better. Right on the sash. Now the pressure on Melville to convert the opportunity into six points. From 30, starts right. It is missed. Oh, the crowd went up. <laughs> I don't think it was a goal, folks. I think the goal player was right there. He had the right idea. Go right, let it come left. But just too far to the right. 6 11 47, cross Trevor 4 4 28. They did their best to fall in that, didn't they? So everyone, all the players went up and the crowd went up. But yeah, unfortunately, they need to probably be behind the goal to have that kind of influence. The old cheer squad influence. As here's a turnover, big tackle. Sten has it, had the free player. Umpires found the free, says it was holding the ball in the end, not much of an advantage to Gully. So we'll go back to Cleavy, who suddenly Gullies have got some momentum here. But can they put it away? The kick to the hot spot, 30 metres out. Hot footy, umpires found a free. It will go the way of Ross Trevor pushing the back. And the Rocks fans that are here and watching on the feed take a breath. I can tell you in the other AFL, it's West Coast by 64 points. Yes, who would believe if that? If you hey? don't mind. A lot closer here. Michael Code winds up with a big kick. Oh. Found the target, couldn't bring it in. Good recovery there by Comain. The bouncing, bouncing, bouncing kick finds its way between the small white and the big white post behind. Gee, that scoreboard's quick. 4 5 29, Ross Trevor, 6 11 47, the Gullies. Back to 18 points. It's with Tiggerman, part of the state team. He decides to go back, wants to have a shot on goal. And he almost, oh, he almost scored it behind. I've actually seen that happen at Sandpool level. Westies <laughs> did it to the Eagles on three times on one very windy day. So here comes the kick back in. Adam Ashotta by the boundary line. Thankfully did not kick it into the man on the mark that we saw in the B grade final. At a critical stage. Hot footy, 55 metres out. Chad Showmakers lays a tackle. In fact, it was Asprey as, Asprey as well. And Pop holds it up, 55 out going from the Rocks goal. They need one. They really, really do need one. Slowly but surely, Gullies. Uh, edging their way forward. It's not a match-winning lead, but it's a low-scoring contest. Yeah, it's getting a bit desperate now. They really need to find something. Teacher going to be really happy with the way things are progressing. They really, really need the next one. If this breaks out to four goals, this kind of event, it's as good as a six-goal lead in a normal game. And they're doing well in the Ruckworth, the Gullies. That, on this occasion, was Penny. Got another clearance away and it's a throw in. I mean, Ross Trevor are lucky obviously with the fact that Tidra Gully haven't converted all the scoring chances, but they're still in the game if they can get one or two here now. G'day to Kerry and to Henry and to Nick Hollins who's watching the game this afternoon. Good ruck work. Alex McKay finds some open space. Bounce is critical here. It ricochets well to Asprey. Tries to tap it on the Merville. He needs help. Here's Personos. Surely he sees the goals and delivers a critical blow. He knows it too, Peter Personos. They call him Pistol Son of a Gun. He's got his third. 
And we've got a game high 24 point lead. Gee, great celebration, wasn't it? I think he realises how important that he was. Went the double fist pump, <laughs> the one jump, it had it all. It's turning into the Premiership quarter for Teacher Gully. It is two goals to the non scoring end, third for Personas this afternoon. He kicked two critical ones early on, the first two for the Gullies to steady the ship. Another assist with a great party trick handball over the head in the middle. And a great finish, which has probably been the Gullies Achilles heel this afternoon. Said before, Ross Trevor need the next one. Now they really need the next one. 16 and a half gone and they are goalless as they were in the final quarter against Teachery Gully in the second semi. And it's all Gully stamp the hand pass on. This is Chad Schoenmakers from 30 out and loads with the kick misses to the left hand side. Another behind. Teachery Gully just winning that contested footy. They're, they're really hard. And getting, they look up the first. and there's runners. Yeah, no doubt. No, it's not, it's, it's, it's winning the contested ball and then having the player to carry and take it forward. Ross Trevor will go with the kick right down the middle. Tiggerman with the tap forward, good thump. Ross Trevor with the ball momentarily. They're at defensive 50, chance to settle. Can't take the clearing mark. Going in hard was Jordan. Good for you. Made sure <laughs> he, wanted, he, he, wants a, he wants a galley's jumper. Tried to, tried to take it off showing makers there. Thankfully, they're pretty tough. They need to be. Spinning throw up. Again, another clearance. Another one to the Gullies. They're dominating in ruck at the moment. Hot footy, 55 out. Good hands, Gullies, but a strong tackle brings Halande down as he was about to scamper towards the open goal. Halande again. This time the hand pass out to Persados for four. No. To the right. It is all TTG at the moment. 26 points the margin. Just can't see where it's going to come from for us, Trevor, at the moment. Indeed not, but they've got an open man here on defensive 50 and Mead. That's a good kick out. Mead has chance to settle. Assess some options. Does the percentage thing, the kick down the line, flying high. Trying to take the mark was manual, couldn't do it. Here come the gullies again. Mick Ward is the kick inside 50, but a bit misdirected. And Jonas has it. Waste no time. They're going to try and clear it to the other side. Ross Trevor. Demetrius has it. Defensive 50. Grab a kick, but his teammate had time. Or at least time to bounce off his opponent. Some pressure here. The hand pass, the mistake to Menzel. Sends it back for Melville. We could almost be seeing the game right here, Colin. Yeah, the uh, fat, fat lady's done, though. If, if, up. if Merville kicks this, we're into miracle comeback territory. And Melville knows where they are, too. He's kicked two today. 20 metres out, 45 degree angle. Goes sideways, goes the snap, and it kicks! The goal! Melville has three. The Gullies have eight. They're 8 13 61. Ross Trevor, 4 5 29. We are almost in the time on of the third quarter. Tell me I'm too early, Colin. 32 point lead. Well, I just I can't see it turning around. I mean, there have been things happened in footy before where, you've, where they have turned it around from this point, but uh, gee, it's. It's hard to see it happening. A teacher guy playing with such great spirit. They're getting their hands to the footy first and running. And now they're converting those chances, which they weren't doing earlier on. Peter Personos has kicked three. He's had a hand in two others. He's been a major difference up forward for the Gullies today. And there will be a Div 1 medal for the player of the game. We don't get a vote. I don't get a vote. Do you get a vote? Uh, it's the umpires that decide. So. The umpire decides? Okay. We'll have that for you at game's end. Which is still, I might add, a fair way off. It's not over yet. Plenty of time. Rocks, oh, there's enough time if they're good enough, but at the moment they don't look good enough. As Dylan Showmakers puts it out into space. This is Cleavy, who had it and lost it. 
It's almost like Ross Trevor need to get the ball, get one of their teammates to mark it and just slow this down a bit. They're losing the contested possessions. Gullies are running in numbers. They're finding open space. And it's taken them in three quarters, but they're converting their opportunities. Well, they're having so many, they only got to convert a certain percentage and it's working. Another good mark. Another Ford 50 entry. This looking for Melville again. Oh, he's got the lead. He's got the jump. He's been a marking target all afternoon. And Trent Melville can go back and if he can slot, it's fourth. Yeah, he's reckon they can target, start the party plans at Pateringa Oval. And it'll be a big party, no doubt. If you want a big night, head on to Teacher Gully tonight from the looks of things. Since 1862, they've been playing footy in Teacher Gully. Never won a Div 1 Premiership before. And that will aid a little bit. Extends the lead by a point. The only case you can make for us, Trevor, is, again, harping back to last week, if they can have a quarter like they did last week in the third quarter, in the last quarter, maybe they can bring their way back yeah. into that capable. But at the moment, Tisha Gully have all the answers. They do. They kicked nine goals to nil in the third quarter last week, Ross Trevor. They're going to, the way this is going, they may need to do something similar. And those quarters don't come about often. Is the kick looking for um, Manuel? He's injured. In fact, he might be coming off. He's just grabbing his shoulder in the end of stoppage. Crowd not happy. Uncontested ruck contest, as I reckon. That was one ruckman tapping it down to the other ruckman. Sort of some sort of fraternity there. As it's with Pat Dawson and his Adam very well. I keep saying very important kick. It's a commentator thing. James Butterworth is marked. Boy, oh boy, Colin de Rocks need this. Oh, no doubt. No. Well, you can't get much more important if you're looking at it from a Ross Trevor perspective. Uh, first forward entry for a while. And, um, yeah, I get this one and maybe another one. They can give themselves a sniff. But, gee, they're still going to be kicking against a big wind in the last quarter. You can see the wind is sort of turning a little bit more towards that goal that Rocks are kicking to now. Butterworth in from 45. I'll tell you what, that's a mighty kick. That is a magnificent kick. And a faint flame still flickers. Ross Trevor, 5-5-35. Trail Teachery Gully Districts, 8-14-62. The margin back to 27 points. In most normal games, Colin, you say that's still gettable. Absolutely. But it's a low-scoring grand final. Yeah, yeah like, both teams are capable of getting that run on footy going. And... Uh, it will have to mean all out attack, but gee, uh, North Adelaide showed it last week. It can be done. Butterworth is fourth, the fourth goal scorer for Rocks this afternoon. Three quarter time, you'd think would be imminent with just a few goals scored in this quarter, but galleys are not done. Working from Personos to Alex McKay to a high kick towards that 50 metre arc. He's like, trying to run through and grab the ball in the process. Unable to do so this time, the Gullies. Now they've got a man in open space. This is Kamani. Kicked the opening two goals. He's a long way out this occasion, but he's got a man in open field. Here comes the kick to the hot spot. Needs a mark. Needs a crumb. I reckon they've got the player here. This is Bacanello, and he's missed on this occasion. But at least it's down there into the field. Ross Trevor, 5-6-36. Gullies, 8-14-62. The margin, 20 six points. Look dangerous the uh, last couple of minutes. Um, they'll be pleased with the, this last part of the quarter, but gee, they've got a little work to do. If they can just sneak another one in here now and go into three-quarter time with some hope. Important that the forwards keep the pressure on. The gullies at different stages have done very well keeping the ball inside that 65-metre area when it's been in their forward line. Now Rocks need to do the same. As this is Jake Haggard with the kick. Big fly. He can get a really, really hot footy. Hand pass out there, a bit tricky there by Nelligan. And it will be a throw in. In front of the uh, one of the boxes here. I think that might be the co coach's boxes up there to our left, Colin, I would assume. Um, oh, maybe. Anyway, no, it spills to rocks. They get the kick on field in Will O'Malley, top of the square. Where's the crumbs? I'll tell you what, there it is. There he is, Tim Beckenham. Suddenly, Ross Trevor, two in a row. 
and they're just starting to fire up the defending premiers. It is only 20 points. We've been talking it down, but gee, <laughs> they'd, they'd be starting to get a sense that they're right in this. But yeah, Tom said plenty more footy to play. Got to dig deep, and that's what Rock. Well, Rock's digging deep. Find your own analogy there. They've got the last two 20-point footy game. Just some momentum to take into the three-quarter time break when all looked lost. And Tetragelli not having won one before, you know, that, oh. they will be nervous. There'll be nerves everywhere. Ross Trevor, Tetri Gully, umpires, commentators, nerves are plenty, you can be sure of that. As it's Karen Holland who sets up the defensive rebound to Tulio Demetrius, gets it out to the outer side, suddenly Ross Trevor getting the ball, getting some open players. Will O'Malley, the kick inside 50. Little bit of fumbly football. Gives chance for Tiggerman to get it on to Dylan Showmakers and for Gullies to clear. They have Chad Showmakers out there by himself and they have Menzel. Showed a bit of class early and did well to take the contested mark in front of Holland. I think he might want to slow it up here. No one really presenting. He'd be more than happy just to take, keep possession of the ball with Ross Trevor's dominating the last uh, part of this quarter. Keep it off Ross Trevor, not a bad idea at this stage. Long kick inside 50, thumb from behind. I'll tell you what, it spills. Uh, Penny with the kick, takes the bends, and I'll tell you what. Momentum's just wish Asprey was there in the goal square. And the gullies just get one against the fly. Let's have a look at this one. The kick came in. Lucky, lucky bounce, but uh, you take them. As, yeah, Asbury with the shepherd, made sure no one else was going to touch it. And the goal to Penny. Yeah, <laughs> just checking. I reckon you're right. We're going to I'll back you in, Phil. Thank you, mate. It is back to a 26-point margin, 68 to 42. And this third quarter, though, I thought would be over about four minutes ago, has suddenly produced a goal fest in its final few minutes, and it may not be over yet. Gullies give, have given Rocks two in a row. They've got one back, and it's inside their forward 50. But loose ball and defence picked up by Ross Trevor. This was Ben Jonas. There's your siren. You think Gullies would just breathe a sigh of relief? They're going to take a 26-point lead into lemon time. Definitely Teacher Gullies, premiership to lose from here. They're kicking with a win the last quarter. Um, a great effort for most of that quarter, but Ross Trevor did show something towards towards the end. On, Give them something to, to believe in. Uh, anything can happen in a game of footy, but definitely it looks like it could be Teacher Gullies' day. That's where you'd want to want to be at this point in the hands of the Gullies from Banksia Park. It is. Tea Tree Gully, 9-14-68. Ross Trevor, Old Collegian, 6-6-42. The goal scorers for Tea Tree Gully, three to Peter Personos, three to Trent Mermenzel, singles to Zach Mackay, Daniel Clayby, and we think Blake Penny got the last one. Ross Trevor, there, six goals, and I know I've missed one. Um, it was Bacchanella got the sixth. Okay, sing two goals to Heath Kamane, singles to Will O'Malley, Tim Bacchanella, Paul Fantasia, James Buttersworth, two to Heath Kamane. We will take the last break of the Adelaide Footy League season. We'll be back with the final quarter. You're with Colin Rouston, Phil Hurd, and it's Tea Tree Gully, 9-14-68. Ross Trevor, Old Collegian, 6-6-42.
Welcome back everybody, Barkal up. One quarter to go of the footy season for the Adelaide Footy League. Channel 9, great sponsors. OTA Division 1 Grand Final. Tea Tree Gully looking at history. There's been footy played in Tea Tree Gully since 1862. That is 156 years, folks. They've been in many comps and achieved many things. They've never won the Div 1 title. They are a quarter away and they have a 26 point lead buffer. Ross Trevor, old collegians. Well, they're the defending champs and we know that when they get on song, they can demolish. Colin, your thoughts on as we enter the final quarter? Uh, no doubt teaching alleys to lose, but Ross Trevor weren't number one throughout the year for no, no reason. They're capable, but it depends on what teacher Gully let them do. We always say it, because it's always true. First goal. Absolutely critical as the first bounce. Both Ruckman ran under it, but it's going to be Rocks with the ball first. This is James Jordan who gets the hand pass out. They've got some open run at forward 50. Long raking kick to the top of the square, taking a crazy bounce. I tell you what, it's a goal from long distance. Gee, that means uh, huge. Means a lot, doesn't it? Can't tell you the goal score because he was so far away. But first goal critical and Rocks have got it. And we'll put that one down to the Phantom for the moment because it doesn't really matter. Because it's all about who's going to get up and we're back to 20 points. Huge goal. Huge goal. One more. And watch the nerves. Absolutely. Break open. Just as the number was being revealed, we lost a shot. Never mind, here come the go, here come Rocks again. They've got the loose man if it can get to in meet. Had to go back and get it. Now he resets. They're starting to evade their tacklers. The Rock Sammy Jonas has kicked towards the square. And it's a mark. Pacanello got the crumbing goal on the goal line in the third quarter. Has marked 20 metres out on the slightest of angles. Tell you what, Ross Trevor have come out in the first couple of minutes showed a real intent to attack, 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 and oh, geez, I reckon we've got game on here. They've got the first two centre clearances from 20. Bacanello has two. Ross Trevor has eight. The crowd is on its feet, and we've got ourselves a 14-point footy game. Where's this come from? It's just honestly that Tetra Gully have dominated the first three quarters, and uh, as I said, Ross Trevor have come out with an attacking mindset last quarter, take the game on, and uh, it could pay off. Whatever has been said at three-quarter time is certainly uh, taken effect. So it looks like this one is going to the wire. Of course, it would only take a gully goal or two just to settle things down. Momentum with rocks, the lead with the gullies. As the kick by the gullies pretty much heads to that outer wing. Here's the race for the football. Sammy Jonas gets there. Oh, Luke, Luke Manuel, sorry, gets there. He brings it back in board. Tackle on the play and umpire says my ball. Just the gully side, centre wing out of side. Yeah, good, good, good play from both teams there. Just what you want to see at this stage of the game. Umpire takes his time to throw it back up in the air. Gully's tap. Gully, in fact, umpire's found a free. Pushing out will go the way of Rocks. They'll get the kick. Here's Will O'Malley, one of their big playmakers. His kick partially smothered. All the loose balls, though, going Ross Trevor's way just at the moment. The kick inside, well, at that 50-metre arc. Two big men fighting for it. This, I think, is code. Pushing every muscle and sinew in his body, and he's been ruled out for bounds. a throw. No, out of bounds. Out of bounds, throw in. Lots of prospective umpires in the crowd this afternoon, Colin. <laughs> That's <laughs> just, what makes footy so great, isn't it? Set up a recruiting tent <laughs> to the back of the ruck contest. It goes. There's Ross Trevor players everywhere. Looking back in LA with the kick inside. How's it going to bounce? Umpire says, Rock's free. Hanging on. Here we go. Saying chopping in the arms of his call. Yeah, probably a fair one. Heath Kamein kicked the opening two goals. 
Had a couple of long distance set shots he didn't seem to want to take. He's going to take this one. 30 out. We're right behind it, Spacequake Sports. To the right. It stayed right. Didn't curve back. 8-8 eight, eight, or 8-7-55. Eight, the quickest scoreboard in the country at Audi Arena. T Tree Galley 9-14-68, 13 point margin. Yeah, very, very important miss. If they got that one, they would have been. Oh my, oh my. <laughs> would have really put Teacher Gully in the back. High so, kick through some hands. Point. It just seems to be lobbing where rocks are at the moment. Kick inside 50. Lots of Gully's players. But come on, he wanted it. He went up and got it. Then he got plenty of attention. He's brought to ground. Gee, that was incredible. There was this ring of Teacher Gully guys. I went, oh, there's a football, and Kamein just said, yeah, I want that. Went and got it, but couldn't escape. Kamein again, a, a tap out, only as far as the gullies. It's Mick Waters by the boundary. Will this stay in board? No, it won't. Out of bounds on the full. New rules, old rules, any rules. It's going to be Ross Trevor football. Karen Holland, half forward flank. Goes with the percentage kick. 40 metres out, big fly, no mark. There's Zach McKay trying to do the crumbing. He's tackled. That's where the stoppage will be. About 26 players inside Ross Trevor's forward 50 at the moment. Yeah, pretty hard to get a clear contest here. Somehow there was a kick out. Not sure about the bounce. It will be a... Well, there's no deliberate rush behind it. There's comp, so... No dispute, no discussion behind Ross Trevor. 12 point game, they've got it back to two straight kicks. The kick in, looking for Chad Schoenmaker's off hands. Here's a player loose if they can find him, no. Yeah, oh, good bounce of the ball to Hurley. Hurley trying to find Gilbert, his kick in hope. And somewhere out of that, Dylan Schoenmaker's has taken a mark and possibly copped one from Bacchanello at the end of it. Yeah, so I got one of the, got one of the head as he went down. Just cop the tail end of the spoil. Everyone stops and takes a breath. It's been a pulsating contest and we've still got plenty to go. Can't believe I called this one over, Colin. Oh, so, so did I. <laughs> so did I. <laughs> Footy is a funny game. Footy is a very funny game. That's why we love it. Gullies have tried to clear it. Only as far as Jonas. There's a Gullies player ridden to the ground and he's got himself a free kick if he can get up. Here, boy, have the ball. You want the ball? It's, like, it's like getting the baby a toy. You know, get up, it's a football. Hey, he's not, always, not finding, too always finding kids' sport, you give the kid who's injured a ball, they feel so much better. But um, in this occasion, Zach McKay, he ain't faking it. He's, he's, been, he's been taken down, he's feeling something. So it's going to go the way of Matt Stent, who we know can really, really roost it. He winds up, unloads. Gonna love 30 metres out. Oh, and what a good contested mark that was to Sam Jonas. He looked left. He'll come right. I'll tell you what, three on one galleys here. They're half a chance. Mark. Mick Waters has taken it. Thought he maybe should have used the numbers, didn't. He'll go back. He'll kick it inside 50. Well, it's two to one. Ross Trevor off hands and out of bounds. Throwing in front of the VIP. Have a look at the crowd of people. Next to the VIP tent, I'm not sure if the camera can pick it up. I think they're Gullies players. There's a whole heap there and they're <laughs> on the fence. They're ready to jump the fence. There they are. <laughs> Great work there, Dave Muggled in there. I can see the red and black. They're definitely Gullies fans. Yeah, they've uh, had a few drinks today, no doubt, enjoying what well, has been a great game. Enjoying the sponsors, West End Product. We thank them for their support. They've, what they've done is they found a piece of shade. I think that's what that's all about. Tap down only as far as Menzel. He lines them up and kicks something really critical. I'm not going to call it yet. I've learned my lesson. <laughs> but Menzel has stemmed the flow Gee, and kicked man. actually his first goal of the game, believe it or not. Well, I've been complimentary of Ross Trevor's defence through the day, but that time they let Troy Menzel get away with Blue Murder. Yep. He ran through that clearance. 
with no opposition and uh, he's a too classy a player to let, let that happen. There was a defender right in the way, but Menzel gave one very good zig before he zagged <laughs> and kicked the opening goal. You tell, it, meant, it meant a lot to him too, he uh, celebrated in ah. great fashion. For the record for JB, this means so much to so many. As it does to Ross Trevor, don't get me wrong. But it's an 18 point footy game, nine minutes to go. You would think we've got 15, 15 to 20 minutes of the season left. Plenty of time as Tom Early tries to take him on. He was, umpire says he got rid of the ball. And so play on. And in these situations, Colin, I mean, we're pretty much following the way that this, these games are ruled anyway. We let the players sort it out as much as possible. Just call the free kicks that are really there. Yeah, most definitely. You've got a grand final here. Don't you want to pay the obvious ones, like the one that was a holding, clear holding. But, uh, yeah, we don't want any silly free kicks right now. Back and has been busy in the last half hour or so. His kick could have been marked uncontested. A little bit of probably lack of talking, but the tap went to Asprey. He gets to Chad Shaw and Makers, and we're going down the outer side. Gullies have it. Almost too long. Suddenly, gullies aren't talking to each other. They've lost their voice. Ross Trevor with the kick. Can oh, they convert? Maybe. Maybe Fantasia. Gee, he was outnumbered there, but big, strong grab. We have seen some really good marking inside forward 50 today. Of the three players that were there, Tigerman, Huggard, and Fantasia, Fantasia had the less rights to that football. Gee, it was a good mark. From 40. And that's away to the left. Could it be a critical point? Time will tell. Three goals will win it for Rocks now. 17 point game, 11 minutes gone. Hope you're enjoying the contest wherever you are watching around the planet. Thanks to Spacequake Sports. The OTR Div 1 Grand Final, Gullies and Rocks. Gullies lead, but Rocks are coming. And on this occasion, Mead's attempt to escape was denied. G'day to Henry, g'day to Sean, g'day to Bailey, who are there on the chat. 17 gone, 17 points, 12 gone. Teacher going to be quite happy to bottle this up. Yeah. Give the tap down to Butterworth on that occasion. They're just soccering it forward. O'Malley has it. He's met by two gullies players straight away. There's Alex McKay throwing himself at the football. Cheers, Gussie player. He really is at the bottom of most packs. You can see the water backdrop, the players, the crowd, the weather. It's the vibe, it's the constitution, <laughs> it's football and Australian the comment, style. And, and the commentary, Phil, you're doing an awesome job. <laughs> Having a ball, Colin, there's nowhere else I would rather be than sitting next to you calling this one. You can hear, hopefully through the effects mic, the fans trying to get behind their sides. Go one more time. Hurley has it. He's tried everything. They're trying to take the shorts off him. Surely there's a free for that. You're not allowed to take the shorts off a player, Colin. Come on. I don't know what wrong that is, Phil, but uh, good tackling pressure for Tetra well, I'll tell you what, they're tough shorts, of which we're all very glad. Ball up. And again, another stoppage. Meanwhile, the clock keeks ticking, 13 minutes. Building Bricky is on the edge of his seat at home. You're not alone. The 27s going hard. Hard, tight footy, you can see it here. This is the Adelaide Footy League at its finest. Gullies get a kick out of nowhere. High mark, no one can take it. Ground level, will it open up? No, it won't. High fend off. A dive, Dylan Shadowmakers yep. has given off. away the free. He's got to give the football back in a hurry, and he does now. Great call. Charles Jordan has it. He gets it on to Sam Jonas, caught him plenty of times today. 
Two on one, Rocks on the outer side. They bring it back in board. They've given it to a key player. This is Will O'Malley from the edge of the centre square. Lines up with the kick. No one can take it. There's your man, Alex McKay, front and centre for the crumb. And the Gullies rebound one more time. And they get it to try Melville, who's been critical on the goals. And somehow Melville, has he got himself a free? Surely not. No, he hasn't. 14 and a bit gone. 17 point game. Plenty of time. To the back it spills. Some quick hands from Sermon. Better hands from the Gullies. They've got some momentum. They've got the run. They've got Stent. He's 55 out. Goes with a long kick to the goal line. And this could be it. This could be it. Great play. Great attacking play. Big long kick. Get it down the forward lines before the defenders can get back. Didn't have a hope. Troy Menzel. A man who has done so much at so many different levels and you wonder what a moment like this means in the context of it all. Just watching him today, it means a lot. You can tell. He's playing with a great emotion. Players play to win premierships. He comes in and the Gullies have got one hand on the cup. It's not over yet, but they're on their way as Menzel gets what I've got as his second goal this quarter. Yeah, he certainly helped out in some of their other goals as well. So that is an absolutely crucial goal. Yeah. And uh, yeah, Ross Trevor have shown their class in the, in the last little bit, but uh, they're going to have to find something really special from here. Yeah. The Gullies, but I'm very worried about that fence, Colin. <laughs> it's going to fall over. There's a lot of people standing behind it. And if they all charge at once, <laughs> it's yeah. pretty solid. We'll be right. There's going to be big celebrations, no doubt about it. Huge Petteringer Oval, which Gully's moved to. I'm trying to remember the year. I can't. Oh. They would have seen nothing like what they might. They won a Div 2 Premiership in 2012. That's the warm up, and gee, they've been right in the mix. Grand final a couple of years ago, being top three last couple of seasons. They found a way to go that extra step. In a year of tragedy, they're just, for mine, about 10 minutes away. And Stent, gee, I'll tell you what, I wouldn't be surprised if Matty Stent is one of those in the medal fixtures. He's been good, hasn't he? He really has been good. When he gets the ball, suddenly Tea Tree Gully have a field advantage with his long kicking. Yeah, then you've got top McKay, players. Menzel, top Personos early was brilliant. And in all of that, we're riding off Ross Trevor, and we shouldn't. Kamane in the middle, gets the hand pass on. Here's the kick inside 50. They need a mark, they need a goal, they need to return this back to within a couple. Four goals they need in about 10 minutes. And Gullies just won't get, <laughs> let go of the ball. So that's Tiggerman at the bottom of the pack. Yeah, they've stepped the fight well. Early on this quarter, it was all Ross Trevor. The game ebbs and flows, and sometimes it's just, you're going to have your moment, it's what you do with it. As that kick is smothered, will be another throw in. Chance almost for the players to just take that breath, reset for what could be a frantic final burst for the season. The throw in that one went. We've seen a few drop short. That one went over the Ruckman's head. No mean feat. Personos is in there. Somehow got the hand pass out. But Asprey couldn't get away from McCullum. They've gained some distance. The Gullies just got out of the danger zone for the moment. We're two minutes from time on. Ball spills. Rocks inside 50. Going back with courage. Oh, we've seen some courage today. This is Pat Dawson. He's one of the, he looks one of the young ones. He knows there's no time. He wastes no time and he keeps rocks in it with their 10th goal. It wasn't a pretty Well, their ninth goal. <laughs> it was not a pretty kick, was it? It was an effective no. kick. 
He took no time at all to have a shot. Yeah. He's aware of how much time is left. He realised he had to hurry up. He's, he's probably 30, but he looks like he's just come out of matric <laughs> from <laughs> Ross Trevor College. <laughs> and it's 9-9-63. Makes his mark even more gutsy. T.G. Garley, 11-14-80. To be built that way and go back with the fly of the ball. Yeah, great effort. So we've got a conundrum with our score and their score. I won't worry about it too much until such time as it gets a bit closer. <laughs> Gullies get the free. Okay, it is 80 to 63. Okay, so 17, that 17 points is where I had the margin. I hadn't kept track of the score. That makes sense. So three goals to Rocks can win it with 30 seconds from time on. And they have it. One of their goal scorers, Kamein, has it to one of their veterans in Hurley. He's in the centre square. Makes the man work for it. Front and square for Rocks. Couldn't bring it in. That was code. Forces the stalemate. 55 out. <laughs> We're in for... A tight 10 minutes. You think Gully's one more goal will do it. As the long kick spills, takes a, a huge Gully's bounce. That's got about 30 metres at ground level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now we get the soccer from Menzel. Can he do something special from the boundary line? It just floated up. He's going to centre the ball. And here's your ball game. Here's your ball game. Ryan Spittle, 15 out straight in front. If he kicks this... I can't see Rocks coming back. We're in the time on 20 and a half minutes. Ryan Spittle goalless thus far today. I don't know his background. I don't know if he's played hundreds of games, but surely this is the big, one of the biggest kicks in his football career. No pressure, son. Straight in front, right down King William Street, and it's going to be party time with Petteringa. The Gullies 12 14 86, Ross Trevor 9 9 63, 23 points gone, 21 minutes down. Only a miracle will save Rocks now. Troy Menzel has been in Schmidt all day, not only kicking a couple himself, but as another example of a goal that he set up, just a, a class player. And it looks like uh, Teacher Gallet is going to win this year's cup. You can just see, you may have got a look there, and we might just let Dave Morgan and see if one of his cameramen can get it. The, the top back of the Tea Tree Gully jumper, JB number six, John Birkin, who in December, just before the last Gully's training session, passed away suddenly, age 24. Premiership player when they won Div 2 in 2012. 92 game senior player passed away and this has been they've dedicated the year to JB and they put the number on the back of all the jumpers and he's been their extra man today. Yeah, pretty emotional win in lots of ways. 23 points the margin, 22 gone. Gully, both teams have kicked three goals. Gully's going forward now, Spittle, the goal scorer. Can they add some icing to the cake? Make it without a doubt. Jonas is under pressure. He's in big trouble and just escaped. Just got the ball away. Looking down there, but in the way, working hard. Chad Schoenmaker sends it back from whence it came. Sam Jonas has to work at it again. He's been one of the busiest players. He's got himself a free kick. They'll bring it across field here, a little bit of danger, but it's going to work for them. Charles Jordan has it. Got the length of the field to go. They've got to do it four times, Rocks, and the clock is ticking. They're bringing it down the wing now, from halfback to centre wing, looking for the fly of Fantasia. Here's Hubbard. Shows the ball as he steps out of bounds. Do you have a free kick for taunting, Colin? Because I reckon that was pretty much it. <laughs> Gee, that teacher gully supporters are in full voice now, aren't they? They are. And why not? If you're not going to be in full voice now when you're winning your first ever Div 1 Premiership, <laughs> it ain't going to happen. Hurley by the boundary. He's taking on one. He's taking on two. Too many for sure. Good night. <laughs> and see the arms. You wouldn't have seen it, folks. 
hundred arms. <laughs> when I, we don't pay too many home. Don't pay too many hole in the balls, and when we do pay them, the crowd enjoys it. 24 gone. It's with Stent. Stent to Haggard. Gullies have said we've scored enough. We keep the ball. We can't lose. The kick will set McKay a task. He has these five foot four. Had the girl foot to get it. Brings it to ground. He's been good too. He's been good. I'm glad I'm not doing the medal. Yeah. You guys, umpires, you have the tough jobs, no doubt about that. Pinch and Zay, they go for. Indeed. Dawson the tap. McKay, another touch, another clearance. Puts the top in. <laughs> spin, spin, spin towards that boundary. Ross Trevor to mop up. Well, they've got to do more than that. They've got to get it, and they've got to kick some goals. But here comes Jack Asprey to lay the tackle. And it will be another stoppage and just a little bit of afters now, which, come on, boys, separate yourselves. Yeah, free kick. And free kick given away, and that's the last thing that Rocks needed. Now, Matt Hallanday, number 24, has it to Stent. Another chance to send the roost in. Another chance for a gully's mark. Not doing. Ground level, 45 out. It is manual working hard for the gullies. We're almost there. 25 and a half gone. The siren is imminent. It's been a six goal quarter for all of Ross Trevor's work. Tea Tree Gully have kicked three goals without a miss. Ross Trevor have kicked three goals, three. The 26 point lemon time margin. After all that comeback, Ross Trevor have only reduced it by three. And now there's just seconds left. Get set for Audi Arena to explode with gully pandemonium. Oh. A big fly by Dawson. Here comes the hand pass out. Here's Personus. Could he kick something miraculous from the boundary? No, he can't. And now it's a big point. It's 24 point margin to win. The gullies need five scoring shots. We not not going to happen, Phil. Not going to happen. And we can call it now. I can call it now, thank you. I think I called it half an hour ago, and they've got a lot of self-doubt. <laughs> I'm I've never called a game in this cop, maybe six goal comebacks in a grand final of the norm. But it's proved not to be. At ground level. Somehow a kick out of the middle of the pack, Asprey. No, it comes to McCullum. He gets the hand pass out, trying to find something along that boundary line, Dawson. Bumped out of bounds into the West End sign. We thank all of our sponsors. Nine News, the Nine News Adelaide Footy League. Sharon, Focus on Furniture, West End, Audi, the Audi Arena, and Bank SA, the major supporters of the Adelaide Footy League. As Rocks work it out of defence with a long circling run and then a kick to the T saucer, where there's a lot of red and black with the sash. Player goes down, umpire says, no, gully's free. Getting a little frustrated now, Ross Trevor. I think I can see the writings on the wall. Yeah. The defending premiers are going to finish second this year. Been a hell of a ride, but they're going to finish short. And something that's really hard to describe when you're the sec when you win the minor premiership, you win a final, you come up just short in the grand final. You've had a great season by all reason and logic. You've had a great year, but you just feel so down after you lose a grand final. There's the gulf the size of St. Vincent between winning and losing these games. Well, since I've started my role with the Adelaide Footy League, 2015, Tea Tree Gully made the grand final. They were in the prelim in 2016, prelim in 2017, and this year... And it's with it Spittle. Who seals it? He's kicked the last two. The hands are in the air. They wave because they really care. And I think that emotion from Spittle and his teammates says more than anything I can come up with. The Gullies 13, 15, 93, Ross Trevor 9, 9, 63, 28 and a half gone. It's a five goal game. Yeah, now's the time they can celebrate. They can really enjoy. The coach can just uh, 
relax a little, and the players and the supporters, they can look forward to what's going to be a big night. Doesn't matter the game, it doesn't matter the grey. This is a magical moment when you know that you are a champion or a premier, and you get to play at the final few minutes as a premier. And they're creating history, and they're playing for John Birkin too. Yeah. They are indeed. 29 gone. Five goal game. Rocks are still going in hard and they'll get the clearance and they'll get the inside 50 and they'll get the mark. Very anticlimactic, says the Gullies fans. <laughs> Not particularly in a hurry to get up and it's the man who kicked the opening two goals of the game. Looked like he was going to have a day out. There it is! TTG! For JB, at top of the tree, your 2018 OTR Division I Premiers, historically for the first ever time, the Gullies of the Tea Tree Gully District Football Club. And let the party at Paringa begin. The final score is Tea Tree Gully 13 15 93, Ross Trevor 9 9 63. Did you see that sprint from the fence? <laughs> you wouldn't want to be in the middle of that pack right now. Quite a dangerous place to be with all those celebrations going on. But what a, what a great win by Teacher Gully. They deserve their victory. Dominant all day. Ross Trevor tried hard, but certainly the best team won. As the uh, umpires now come off and maybe just give their votes for the uh, best on ground. And umpires today, Colin, as they head off, we should pay them due kudos. No impact in the contest, and that's probably what you want. Yeah, no really, please. You're not going to get 100% right. There's always going to be things you can say they got wrong, but overall, they did a great job. It's like someone said there's $500 in the middle of the ground. First to there gets it. And what we're witnessing now is just sheer emotion everywhere. The umpire's relief. <laughs> They're off the field. Ross Trevor shattered thinking what could have been, what if I did this or what if I did that. And if you're involved with the Tea Tree Gully Footy Club, you're probably smiling, you're probably crying, you're probably hugging, you just can't believe what you're feeling at the moment. Yeah, they work so hard, you know, the pre-season starts, uh, you know, November-ish. You know, they work so hard during the pre-season. And then it comes to the footy season and they put their bodies on the line week after week. And then the pressure is really on when it comes to finals and particularly grand final day. And uh, yeah, they absolutely deserve their victory. We'll give you some official stats as we let the pitchers in front of you tell the story. Tea Tree Gully 13, 15, 93, Ross Trevor 9, 9, 63. For Tea Tree Gully, it's their 17th senior premiership at any grade level. They become the 29th club to win an Adelaide Footy League Division I title. They've won two Division II premierships in 2006 and 2012. They've spent the last six years in Division I. They were seventh in their first year, and I think when you get in there the first year, your aim is let's just survive going back down. 2014, they finished fourth. They won the elimination final, lost to Henley in the semi. They finished fourth. 2015, they were 15 and three. They were the minor premiers. And they started, I think the dream that ended today started then as minor premiers. They lost, went out in straight sets to Goodwin in the second semi. The prelim to PNU finished third. 2016, they went 14 and 4, finished second. Beat Paynham in the qualifying, lost to Prince Alfred. Defeated Salisbury North in the prelim, made their grand final and lost to Prince Alfred. Last year, they won the qualifying lost to these very same Rocks boys in the second semi, lost to Paynham in Nord Union in the prelim, finished third. This year, they finished second, 12-5-1, and, and have gone 3-0 and in the finals, defeating Goody Saints, Ross Trevor in the second semi, the minor premiers, and Ross Trevor in the grand final. It's been a long road to hoe, a club that's been around for 156 years. What a day for Tea Tree Gully. Yeah, they've been so close in recent times. They're a very strong club junior-wise. They've got a lot of junior footballers go through their club. 
and obviously been a, a real powerhouse in Div 1 without claiming the Premiership and today they've been able to achieve it. So I'm assuming folks that we are sticking around for the presentations because there's a flag to be given out, there's a cup to be handed over and these are the magical moments that dreams are made of. And um, I had the pleasure, I'm not a player, I was with the Eagles Club in the Sanford when they won the cup in 2011 and had the joy of taking it around the local community for a year and it's lovely to have, to show off and say look what we did. I umpired that game, Phil. It was my last game of Sanford footy. And, uh, a day we both remember very well. <laughs> it was great. Okay. Well, we are going to wind it up, I've been told. If you're a Tea Tree Gully fan and you're watching, Petteringa Oval, get there. <laughs> get an early car park because there is a convoy coming up North East Road that will have fag flags flying, <laughs> scarves waving, and it will be party town. So, probably time to say some thank yous. I want to thank the Adelaide Footy League for all the work they do in strengthening communities through footy and the phenomenal growth they've had and the wonderful spectacle that they have put on today and for allowing Space Quake Sports to bring this to you. I want to thank the Space Quake Sports team headed by Dave Muggleton, the wonderful crew up the top there on the scaffold with the cameras doing a sensational job not looking at me because they'd just be embarrassed but that's okay bringing you what have been some great pictures today I want to thank you Colin Ralston for all your support this afternoon great we, we go back away you and I great to work with you once again well done thank you Phil and oh, magnificent job uh, for someone that hasn't called Adelaide footy games this year to step in and do the grand final so well well done thank you mate and thank you all for tuning in we hope you enjoy the day um, if you want to follow local sports, no one does it better than Space Quake Sports. Check them out on Facebook. And, of course, for all your uh, local footy news, adelaidefootyleague.com. This is Phil Hurd, and on behalf of the Space Quake Sports team, signing off. Congratulations to Tea Tree Gully. History made. And for JB, wherever you are, smiling, I'm sure. Tea Tree Gully, 13, 15, 93. Ross Trevor, 9963. The Gullies by 30 points. Good night from the Audi Arena.